we're in a rural area, so. No, same here. They actually had to shut down the lock. With a whole bunch of dudes and a couple really cool chicks. <laughs> come here, teach. Mostly, we come to bullshit. Caribou heart, we all play our part in this cannabis game. Caribou heart, come pop a squat, recreate, we'll just kill your pain. Rolling up weed into a bunch of dudes and a couple dang dab hits. Laughing along. Getting real stoned, don't forget, dear Uncle Rick. Caribou heart, we all play our part in this cannabis game. Caribou heart, come pop a squat, recreate, or just kill your pain. I couldn't get my mouse going and get it like to go on the spot to stop the screen share. It's like, come on, get moving. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, great to see everybody. Well, it's going to be a great night tonight. We've uh, got episode, what, 171 tonight, Tuesday night. So we've got Green's Goddess hanging out with us. Now, this is one that fucks me over a lot when I'm looking through the YouTube <laughs> chats on different shows. Because on my screen right now, we've got our Green Goddess. And then we've got the greens goddess sitting right beside her. So you can see how that can uh, be really confusing. And there'll be some times where I'll be like thinking I'm saying hi to you or one or the yeah. other, not that person. It's the other, but you know. In I chat and they're like, oh shoot, I thought you were green goddess this whole time. I'm like, well, she's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's All awesome. right. So how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Um, let's see, what did I do today? Man, I got so many chores done. I'm doing like a huge batch of oils because I finally got the time to process all of the outdoor stuff and, and turn it into like bubble hash and oils now. So I've been cooking up a shitload of fucking oils. So I'm working on that right now. Um, I've also been planning for my garden, planning what I'm going to do indoors and outdoors. And... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, house chores, cooking dinner, taking care of the family and whatnot. That's the typical keeps me busy. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Oh, that's a, yeah, I hear that. Um, yeah, you just mentioned that you're make you're trying to make some plans for your indoor or outdoor guards here. Did you come to any decisions on the, any of those or are you still thinking hard? Yeah, um, so I got some seats planned out for my next run. In one of my rooms, I have two beds. So right. those two beds get harvested at the same time, but I don't always need that much in a month. So I'm deciding one bed is gonna be for like THC plants and another bed is gonna be for like CBD plants or CBG plants. Like those are two things I'm getting into right now. And um, let's see, so far I have two rooms and I'm about to set up a, a third area that used to be my veg area. I'm gonna get one more bed from Build a Soil. It's gonna be a four by four. Um, and all these old pots that I still have like 10 gallon pots, they're living soil from Coots Mix. They got worms, they got nematodes, they got everything in them. There's no reason to throw those away. I definitely don't want to put it outside because I've had it inside, you know, I'm just going to take all of those pots and put them all into the uh, living soil bed and, um, do autos. So I tried autos just playing around, right? I did it outdoors and it didn't come out so great. And <clears throat> I almost want to give up on it, but a lot of people were talking about autos are better indoors. So I said, okay, I'll give it one last chance. And I grew a couple of them indoors and they're looking pretty badass. So now I'm thinking, okay, that's, I mean, just for fun, you know, just for like a personal stash or just for something new often. And um, we'll see how it goes. But uh, they grow pretty well in a 10 gallon pot. So I'm wondering if I had a four by four living soil bed, what would happen? I think so, a lot of fun out. and awesomeness would happen uh, personally. Huh? Um, huh? I, I, I said, uh, sorry, I can't even fucking talk right now. Saying uh, a lot of fun and awesomeness would happen. That's my opinion. So, yeah. Have you done autos yourself? 
Um, a, a little bit. I kind of, it's more of like, I've always been like a novelty for me. I've pretty much always had one in the veg area, but it's, I've never really dedicated proper attention to learning to dial it in. And I've also, I also think another thing is I probably also had not very good genetics. So when you see the results are these, you know, we've all heard of the six inch to a foot tall plants that you're lucky if you get a joint. I've had uh, quite a few of those. That's the norm. I think I yeah. got a half ounce off a Jack Herrer auto. Uh, <laughs> that, right? and that, that's the kind of my, the best I've done. But in our group of people within our Caribou Heart crew, um, our, our, our brother hype, he's actually a sponsor of our show and he does, uh, he does auto flower genetics and everybody's been growing his stuff and everybody seems to be having killer results. You got guys like profit who, when we first started hanging out together, he wasn't, wasn't necessarily against autos, but he was like, they ain't my thing. Like he basically doing what I was telling you, where you get a joint per plant. If you're lucky, uncle Rick had basically had the same successes at certain points too. And it's like all these people that can't grow autos for shit are now getting very good harvest out of it. So I've I, I've tried to germinate a couple of hypes and the first few kind of I fucked up and those were or the cat killed before I could fuck it up. Uh, that happened once. And now I got one that, that took that I'm looking at right now and it seems to be doing really well. And I'm going to um, kind of just keep popping one every, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks or something like yeah. that. And, always have one that's in each kind of each cycle right you'll have one just sprouting one kind of just pre-flowering one mid-flower one just finishing it would be uh really cool i think and the fact that it's medicated uh genetics for the most part uh by and by med medicated i mean cbd uh mm -hmm. elevated uh hype likes to work with those and that's to me very very cool Right. It's all medicated. Sometimes people are just looking for different terpenes and cannabinoids. That's one of the reasons why I, I think I'm going to like playing with the autos is because of that quick turnaround. If I get good at it, I could easily teach somebody else how to grow their own medicine. You know what I mean? So what, what size pots are you in with your autos? So right now I'm using a two gallon in cocoa. Oh, um, crap. <laughs> well, that's, I was oh, wait. I, I, in cocoa, I, so... Yeah, if I'm fighting for space right now, that's, that's my thing. I got in that this was this is still just a project, this uh, auto, right? Although it's starting to look like I should do pretty good. Once I get a little bit more space or I'm kind of showing I can dedicate more space to autos because you got to kind of proof of concept needs to be there. Because if I... If I'm not getting the harvest off an auto right there where I could have a photo period where and I'm going to pull ounces off of that, right? It's the, there has to be some kind of uh, positiveness. But any, but uh, Hype says that uh, two gallons is fine. He says he runs those in cocoa. You just water and frequently, um, sometimes yeah. twice a day, just see yeah. what it does. But I like to butt chug them so that they're always filled up and pretty relatively wet. So. I do like um, living soil. So my pot is the size of food that's in there. And yep. I don't, I don't know. I've never, this is my first time messing around with autos indoors. So it's way more successful than my first time doing it outdoors. But like you said about genetics could be a thing, but um, they did not like being outdoors at all. Um, it was, I, I was pretty harsh on them because of what I was feeding my big, huge monster plants. So it wasn't so great for them. And I literally got like maybe a joint off of each one. Um, but indoors, these ones are looking pretty good. Like for three plants, um, I'd be lucky if I got um, an ounce, maybe a little bit less than an ounce. I don't know. Um, hey, Uncle Rick, what, you grow autos? What size pot do you use? Uh, let's see. How do I answer that? Uh, I have had, well, let me, let me cut to the chase. I haven't had a shitload of success with, with autos. Uh, <laughs> I tried, I tried a couple of years ago. I I'm not giving up as a matter of fact, yeah. uh, the bottom line is, uh, if, if I want to have any success growing out outdoors, it has to be autos, uh, based on the uh, lines of latitude that I live at. Um, so I'm not going to give up, but, uh, to answer your Two years ago, I tried. I tried to grow a bunch in a bed, just a big bed. Yeah. Uh, but I here's the thing: uh, if you put those uh, into shock, if you shock them in any way, shape, or form, that's it. You're done. They, they, yes. They're very unforgiving, and that's the beauty of photo period. Is that you know 
they'll allow you to. So uh, that year I had 18 outdoor um, plants and they finished off about that big. I was hoping to get like a joint, a plant, and it turned out about a, a joint for all of the whole thing. So that was two, two years ago. Last year, I got, uh, I got seeds uh, from hype and, uh, and it started off really well, but again, I, uh, I screwed up and, uh, and they never forgave me, but it was a little better last year. Those were in uh, three gallon pots uh, in cocoa. Um, so yeah, I, uh, and so I'm not the expert, that's for darn sure. I, I don't know how big those pots should be at this point, but uh, we're going to figure it out. So I've never grown autos, um, but I do have some auto seeds coming yes. and I have also been told, so I was originally going to put them outside this year as well, um, because last year I had so many issues with like powdery mildew and stuff. And I figured uh, maybe it might be better to, to do the autos, but everyone's telling me, no, they're no good outside either. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to go that way. I think I'm going to just do my regular outdoor stuff and I might grow a couple in the two by two tent and see how they go. See, see um, I, I'm, I'm completely different there. I mean, I, I like growing mine outdoors, my auto flowers. I mean, I, I had some pretty good success this year on the okay. auto flowers outside. Yeah. But, uh, my, on my indoor, my, when I first grew them indoor, I was I was getting them little stubby that Uncle Rick was talking about, just couldn't figure it out. And then when I when I went outdoors with my big girl outdoors this year, I, I was throwing I was throwing four or five autoflower plants in into a, a seven to ten gallon pot, and th they were doing pretty good. And I was averaging probably about three fourths to an ounce off of each plant. So I was, I was happy with them results for, for them being the good results. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, I, I myself, it, when I use them bigger pots for the auto flowers, I, I, I like to throw, I like to throw four or five plants into that one big 10 gallon pot. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. the, the, their root balls aren't going to take up a ton of room. I don't think. You know what I mean? So that's just my preference. Yeah. You know what? I might actually just do throw a couple outside too, just to test yeah. those out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and right now I, you know, I'm running 18 testers, auto testers down in my tent and they're all in two gallon pots. And I like the two gallon pot so far on the inside. I mean, they're, 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 they're every bit of two and a half feet almost three feet tall probably and, and 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 i like i like that smaller i was worried about it i thought they would tumble over but it, it's almost like in that two gallon pot it's almost like what what your uh five gallon photo would be you know what i mean and and uh situation wise so with the you know i'm not too concerned about them flopping over and falling over yeah. Good. Mine are pretty strong too. Like um, I, I was pulling them down, you know, to because they really wanted to be in that light, and I had to keep going back to retighten the green string because it was loosening the green string, pulling it up, and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> put <it> back down." <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. Green string, it's like a yo-yo type of. Uh... Um, the green wire, the gardener's yeah. wire. Yeah. Okay. So I okay. guess it's not string, my bad. <laughs> uh, probably is. Yeah. Like this stuff? Yes, oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like a better version of a garbage twist tie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've used yeah. those. Those are good. Those are good. Um, I, yeah. I, oh, I, I use those a lot, well, for the pots and for like little plants and little pots. Like they're perfect to get um, a clippy that you would like clip a uh, paper together or clip like, like something shut, clip that on the edge of your pot and use that green string or green wire that comes off of the clippy and holds part of your plant down. That way you could spread your plant out when it's young in a smaller pot. Uh -huh. Well, I guess yeah. I'm talking about um, regular, regular marijuana plants, <laughs> not autos, because the autos, let me show you guys. Oh, do I got enough battery? I'll give you a quick preview of my autos. Yeah, they're called candy fruit. 
I think it totally matters who the um who the breeder is. Definitely. Yeah. You're talking about autos? Yeah, these are my autos. So this is my smallest one, but this is is possibly, I mean, it's really thick. This might be about a little bit more than a half ounce. And this is the green string I was telling you about. Yeah, have to keep yeah, yeah. Pulling it yeah. down. So if you see here, um, what I had done was, so this is my living soil pot, but you know, all the other um, plants that was growing in it had died off. I started my seed in this cup and the bottom of the cup is cut out. So, I mean, if I dig, I could get to the bottom of the cup right here. And uh -huh. there's like you know, all sorts of worms and stuff like that around in here. Uh, anything dead, you know, I just leave the mulch, top dress it with worm castings. I've only given it um, tea. I, I rarely feed it. And um, the trichomes on it are just really nice. It's given a nice fade. What, what day are they area on? area too with the cup. I never even thought of just cutting out the I know. The cup right in. Well, you know, <laughs> the nice thing about that is uh, less possibility of disturbing uh, the roots. Yeah. Especially no, when, you, when you need a water. So when the pot needs to get watered, but um, the cup doesn't really need to, or if just the cup needs water, but the rest of the pot doesn't need a whole bunch of water. That's why I did that. Yeah, this one is really is nice. Fun. This is probably another ounce right here. So when I see a, a totally dead leaf all the way like that, I just put on the on the floor there. This stuff, I would chop it and just drop it right there. Sure. This one's getting yeah. really thick. I mean, wait, am I pointing you guys? There you go. <laughs> That's, That's good, my hand. Yeah. This is really thick. It smells so nice. Wow. What 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 day? Uh, what day are they on? I think I started these uh, mid-October, so that far away. No, oh, you're probably <laughs> 20 days off or 14 days. You just keep checking the trichomes and uh, yeah, every day just... I just come up here. I look at these hairs. Yeah. And uh, the trichomes, the hairs are show me it's almost ready, but I definitely check in the trichomes. I want to go for a little bit more amber trichomes. Uh -huh. So that way you get more of like a heady high. Yep, yep, yep. By the way, that's a spectacular uh, aloe, aloe you got going on there. Wow. Thank you. I got two of them and they're mean. <laughs> well, there's hardly any space for me to get by in water and they always prick me. Oh, and yeah. Like, Keep it up. I'll throw it in the garbage. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. I love um, both of those aloe plants. Are They've always been so easy, easy to take care of. Like any succulents are super easy to take care of. You just set them up with some good um, organic soil and a lot of sand, a lot of sand and uh, aeration. And then the bottom needs a lot of rocks and sand and you hardly ever water them and they'll be your best friend. And those aloes get um, tea too, cannabis, or sorry, not cannabis. Oh. Tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, they, they, I mean, they look so uh, thick, <laughs> thick and happy and yeah, they're nice, very nice. Uh, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, that you were going to devote an area for, we'll let the frog finish, and uh, uh, for a CBG. And uh, I was wondering if uh, we could talk a little bit about that. Uh, um, I, I just I, I just was reading about, about the CVG uh, today and and, uh, and its benefits. Like there's new stuff coming out all the time about new cannabinoids and their benefits. It's just incredible. Do you know some of the benefits of CVG over CBD? Um, I want to go get my paper in front of me. That way, I'm not saying something that's wrong uh, information. Uh, hey, listen, I I didn't want to put you on the spot or anything. Oh no no no, no you're fine. I, I've just got a, I just got a, a vague interest in uh, in CBG. One thing I did read uh, was that um, CBG, uh, you're if you take it when when the plant is younger, uh, you can get more CBG out of it out of the plant. Uh, and they they it's kind of made early. a. If you yeah, I'd let. I just did a quick little bit of research, not much, but. 
also they were they were suggesting if you if you were averaging say 30 percent uh, thc in a plant and 30 percent cbd uh that there might be about two to four percent cbg which i thought is a very low ratio and so i don't like i said i don't know too much about it but uh, they were talking about yeah if you take the plant earlier that there might be more cbg in it that's interesting to know this is i i know next to nothing about cbg itself or at least i haven't studied enough to or committed to memory um i know shaping fire shango lost it a really good episode on his podcast a month or two ago it was awesome but i've got a like a five pack or whatever it is of cbg seeds i got free from seeds here now that i'm just kind of sit waiting on until i know a little bit more and then i'd like to start working that because just you know total cannabinoids and uh, maximum yeah. benefit that you can get the line. yeah um so some breeders are starting to breed for more cannabinoids and terpenes which, which i'm super excited about so that too many people want to get the same thing all the time and i get that a lot of people need the same thing but I, uh just i like it when breeders are going after that unique property in a plant that other people could really benefit off of that medicine and that we need the research to do it so i pulled up my page about cbg um i had done this like uh last year for um april i think april is just a great month to celebrate cannabis so on my Instagram, I set up this uh, education where I was doing like a post every single day about different cannabinoids and their benefits and also different terpenes as well. I found the one I wrote on CBG. Um, so it reacts with your receptors in your brain and acts as a buffer to the psychoactivity of THC, which means <clears throat> typically when you have a lot of CBG, you wouldn't get an extreme paranoia type high. Um, that also totally depends on the person taking it. It works to fight inflammation, pain, nausea. Um, CBD does the same stuff. Slow the proliferation of cancer cells. Um, CBD and THC do the same things. And um, it reduces uh, intraocular eye pressure. So uh, people who are having like really bad problems with their eyes, glaucoma and stuff like that they could um, take some CBG and it'll help take that pressure off. And it's also helping fight inflammation and pain. So that's probably why that there's a lot of research done specifically on the eye area and it works really well. Um, strains high in CBG will be beneficial treating conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease and cancer. So CBG and CBD have quite a lot in common but there's some things that they don't quite have in common. So it's just really nice um, to be able to do your research and find it out and say, okay, where can I go get my CBG seeds from? And uh, there was one time I got my oil tested and uh, I ended up pulling the plant a little bit earlier than I would like to. And it did show just a small amount of CBG on the test results. And right now I'm growing some CBG seeds from Hoku seeds and they're called um, Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He came up with that name. Well, technically the alcohol came up with that name way before 2020. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it also sounds to me like um, CBG is better for stomach issues than CBD. Like, you know, from everything that I've been told before this, like, cause some of these are new that like, or newer and we don't know a whole lot about them. So it was always just THC and CBD and CBD was more for the stomach issues. But from what you're describing, CBG sounds actually a lot better for stomach issues. And that would be really good in a combination of all. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. They both help out because they yeah. both help out with pain and inflammation and gut health because of your receptors that you have in your body. You have them along your gut yeah. and certain cannabinoids such as CBD and CBG can help out with that. THC can help out a little bit too. Um, definitely a combination. So if you had a gut issue and you were looking for like cannabis medicine to help out, if you had a combination 
a CBD and CBG. And that's something you could take every day without getting real high. Cause maybe you've got to focus and you've got to work and you're just trying to function without being in incredible amounts of pain. Totally. Let's yep. call it like the endocannabinoid system. Like your body has all these receptors that take on uh, cannabinoids, either cannabinoids that you make or phytocannabinoids made from a plant. Yeah. But but we need to call it like a plant receptor system, because if you look up plant medicine in general, it helps out with so much. shit. There's so much things that you could do eating like regular, um, any kind of food or, um, certain types of spices that could help out your stomach because your stomach has receptors inside of it. My yeah. friend this morning shared a thing about, have you ever heard of uh, warm lemon water first thing in the morning? No, I haven't either. Uh, she said that it helps out for people who have gut issues because it's a total cleanse of whatever is left in your gut. You cool. take half a lemon and you squeeze it into a glass of warm, maybe slightly hot water yeah. and you just drink it. And then you don't eat anything for at least half an hour. So I'm okay. like, you know, I have to give that a try. It sounds pretty awesome. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Cause uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but a lot of other things are affected in your body simply from your gut. You may not even realize that it's your gut. Your gut might feel fine and something else is wrong, but it is still your gut that's doing it. So that's really cool. Really and what's, cool. what's signaling your gut for a lot of people, it's stress and anxiety. Totally. Yeah. And you think about like kind of simultaneously THC helps out a little bit with that in, in the back in the back way, like it says, you know what, I'm going to help relieve your stress. I'm going to help relieve your anxiety. You don't got to worry. I'm going to help calm your mind. And then, and CBD and CBG are up on the front line saying, all right, we're going to take care of your pain, your inflammation. We're going to take care of this gut because it's hurting right now. Totally. So both are all, I mean, just everything as a, as um, an entourage effect is extremely beneficial. So I don't, I know that, um, like the um, studies are separating cannabinoids, but I don't think when people take on plant medicine, they should be separating cannabinoids or separating terpenes. Or thank you, I totally agree <laughs> with you on that. Uh, I can't stress it enough. Like people will come in and they want something without THC, and I understand. You know, there there's situations where you may want to take something through the day without THC or whatever. But I always try to get them to take something for at least the evening that has everything because, yeah, yeah. I, even during the day, I, I go to sleep when your mind is wandering so hard. Yeah, I smoke all the time, so <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> oh, yeah, functioning high. Like you know, I just show up. I feel like uh, you know, depending on which strain that I could come in and I'm like working faster and better and like uh, foreseeing things and like, you know what, how about I make this easier and I'll just switch it up a little bit. Yeah. I, I could do that so much better when I'm high versus if I went in there, like not high and I'm just like tired, mopey, slow. I don't know. And I get annoyed easier if I'm not high. Yes. <laughs> like <laughs> my, <laughs> You're going to get on my nerves if I haven't smoked anything. <laughs> Well, yeah. you think about there's other times like green goddess you work in um, a customer service uh type of job and so you say you get that just that dickhead customer that comes in and they're they're yeah. having a bad day for whatever their reason is right they just come in and unleash their fucking hell spirit yeah. on you or whatever right yeah. and that, that just sets you off because you just got chewed out for something you didn't even fucking do right yeah. and then you, that just kind of fucking chaps your ass and you might stew on that for the rest of the day or you can go smoke a joint chill out and go on with about your day i'm yeah. one of those people like uh we don't smoke weed all day long at work we wouldn't do that right um but like when you're sitting there midway through the day and you're just kind of fucking like just whatever's going on and you realize you're just like fucking you're getting a little bit more rammy and just it's like yeah you it's know like it's stop time. and go <laughs> and maybe uh smoke a cigarette instead of a joint thing eh? um <laughs> And I uh, just chill out. And it's, it's funny because I'm starting to actually recognize those signs in me that it's when you do start getting agitated and it seems like oftentimes just stupid fucking shit that you're just suddenly oh, yeah. livid over. It's like, uh, just go smoke. And, and oftentimes it's just like whatever was just had you on the verge of possibly exploding and completely losing yes. it. 
now you're just like, well, it's a pain in the ass, but you, you know, and you're able to smile about it. Yeah, it's almost like it refocuses you to solve the problem afterwards. Yeah, well, I, I, I think a big part of what you're saying about going out and smoking is really what you're doing is you're removing yourself from the situation. You're going into another room, hopefully outside, so you can get the fresh air. You need yeah. to cool off. So if you go outside just for a split second and you cool off and you get that fresh air, then you're taking deep breaths, just like you would if you were smoking and take deep breaths. You could come back in a little bit changed. Totally. I mean, I know there's times when I've smoked weed and it's switched my thinking because that's exactly what THC does is it makes new yep. neural connections. I no longer think about myself. I'm thinking about the other person and what I have done to affect them, what they have done to affect me, how we both reacted to each other. So, I mean, THC does that for me, but a lot of times if I don't have that and I could just go step outside and get a fresh breath of air and just breathe deeply and calm down just as you would if you were smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Or drink. Yeah. They actually have these things that you can buy um, that it's for anxiety. So basically you, oh. you breathe you breathe in and then you breathe out through this thing. And just because you're more focused on breathing through this thing, it slows your breathing down automatically and it helps with your anxiety. So I, I thought that was kind of cool. You oh, like, I still just like oh, the but... smoking a joint trick. That's my first. <laughs> yeah, it is. It helps oh, so many. Because there, the other thing is there, like there's the, there could be a placebo effect there, right? Because you're going out, removing yourself from the situation and just doing something, smoking whatever to get your mind off it. But we also do know there is medicine in these plants that we're ingesting too. So, and it's, it's uh, and some strains do just have that relaxing effect on you too. Where yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't really matter what your situation, you can be in a good mood, great mood, like we're all right now, and you smoke a joint of that one straight, and then you're just like, hey, you just melt back a little <laughs> bit more, you know. That's true, yeah. It's helps oh. you know, to forget why you were pissed off 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Speaking of smoking yeah. one, uh, this right here is that GG4. Rick's got uh, oh. some of this at his house. Well, not some of this, but the plant at his house. Um, it dried up. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we we uh, it dried up a little bit faster than we wanted it to. We, so we smoked a tester joint last night. And um, when I was like going out to burp in the bag, I was like, it smells like I thought like onion chip dip, like French onion chip dip, <laughs> which the I, I've grown um I've grown this strain like a Gorilla G Glue number four from Canuck seeds once before, uh, just one one bean out of a different pack of seeds, and it was very fruity, almost like Skittles or something like that. It was just amazing, and this stuff smelled very fruity on the plant, but when you open it up, and at first your thoughts like, did it just go rotten while it was in there? Because it, it it didn't smell like that before, and now and then I handed it to the girlfriend, going, "Does this is this what I'm smelling?" And then she's, uh, "No, it smells like funyuns." So yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that sounds exactly. I mean, yeah, she right brings on, it downstairs right and bring, waves it in front of her daughter's face, and her daughter, I guess, used to be a big funyun freak when she was a little bit younger, and she's like, "Yeah, that smells just like funyuns." I just oh, that's like, oh. one of those amazing things about uh, the plant, right? Like, uh, cool. Just, I'm you never excited. Know what you're gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you mentioned about the drying, I gotta tell you what's what I'm just going through now. Uh oh geez, I I get so angry with myself, but what the hell? I uh, just I just uh, brought down my my last uh, run and uh, put it in my room to dry. Now the thing is, right now the humidity is so low where we are, where we are. So I put it all in, and the room is, I don't know, maybe 12 by 12 or 14 by, I don't something like that. And I had it all hung up and uh, put on the heat because it's cold. And uh, then I, as I normally do, I put on the dehumidifier. And uh, <laughs> thank you. it took me like two days. Two, Two days to three days to figure that out. Like I, I come back and there's no water in the dehumidifier. And what the fuck? And I got like four of these kicking around. I said, well, maybe it's broken. So I get another one. Uh, come back. Same problem. I got no water in these things. And then suddenly 
And then I touched one of the buds and I'm going, oh my God. And I realized what I, what I was doing. Uh, so I took yesterday, I took a, filled a five gallon bucket with water. I threw a blanket on the floor, a five gallon bucket of water, dumped it on the blanket. And I came back this morning, dry, bone dry. Wow. I got the I got the humidity up. I got the humidity back up, but oh my god! <laughs> no. That's yeah, interesting that... trick. Sorry. That's an interesting trick because I got my um my hang tent. I call it my dry cure tent, whatever. Um, I could never get it at that sixty sixty, and I'm like, uh, should I put a humidifier in there? I don't want like my buds to get moldy i don't know what i can do for that for that dry tent just so that it's like at that perfect 60 percent humidity and 60 degrees well i would imagine if you uh, you know if you were into it uh then uh yeah you could you get these uh, controllers uh they're pretty cheap at amazon uh Forget, I'm trying to think of the name and you, it's got two, two separate plugs. And so you can plug one into your humidifier, humidifier and then your other one into your, your dehumidifier, if you will, but, and they'll, they'll, they'll fight each other. So when the temperature gets, you know, or the humidity gets too high, one will go on. And, and then when it brings it down, the other one goes on. So it. Oh, interesting. So it'll always keep it there. Yeah. So like, yeah, if you set it for, if you set it for 60, it'll go up to 65 and down to 55 or something like that. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that on my next run as well. I think I'm having humidity issues as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I keep I, my inline fan on all the time. Is it from outside air that you have your inline fan on all the time? Just the room. Okay. Um, yeah. You might not need to have that inline fan on 24 seven. If you could have it coming on like 15 minutes on 15 minutes off sort of thing. Yeah. I, I, I asked the same question on Instagram. I'm like, dude, I do not understand how I could possibly get more humidity in this room. Um, you know, what humidifiers are you guys buying? Like, I don't got money for that. And then this one cool girl who also lives in Colorado said, you know, maybe don't have your inline fan on 24 seven. So I said, mm, okay, I don't know. But I did what, what she suggested. I mean, what could it hurt giving it a try for a day or two? And it fucking worked. Dude, my uh, humidity went from 30% up to 50 to 55%. Yeah, so that, that is my problem. If I, if I leave it on 24 hours, it, it's uh, way too low. And then if I keep it off, um, it's usually okay for like a couple days. And then it's like a fucking sauna in there. So I think you're right. Like, even if I had it go on like once a day for like 15, 20 minutes, I think I would be fine. So you're right. I'm trying you to get away with it. And see what works. I fucking hate timers, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they are driving me nuts. Like I bought three timers. I finally got this one working, Uncle Rick. Oh my God. <laughs> what kind of timer can you show us? Um, I might be able to. Let's see here. I got to unplug you. It's a, a Titan something. Oh, I think you might have the same kind of timer I use. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it back there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I finally got it working. <laughs> but then, like, I'm used to the old school ones where, like, you put the little pegs in. So when I got this one and I couldn't get it working, I was like, screw this. I'm going to get the old school one. Well, they suck now because, like, <laughs> it didn't come on when I told it to come on. Like, it, it was coming on at random times, and I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> I had the old one from, like, a Christmas box, you know, like, oh, it's good enough for Christmas lights. It's good enough for what I need it for. Absolutely not, 
because the time always goes off. It's it's like never perfect. So yeah. I got those same, the same thing that you have. That's what I have going on for my lights and fans. It's perfect. It works great for me. Okay, well, this will be the test. This is the first day I've had it on, and it came on, so <laughs> now I hope it goes off and we're all good. <laughs> Those ones are cool. You could click the things down or up for every 15 minutes. Yeah. If I wanted to play around with it, that's what, I mean, that, what I did is just 15 minutes on and off the whole time. Yep. And I have done the test on that, so I think it's good now, but I just. Oh, it's a little tricky. Oh, and what, about, what happens with daylight savings time? Am I also supposed to move my timer? Because right now my garden is like an hour off of my typical schedule. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like I thought about that too. And like about the time, like putting it on the right time, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's 12 and 12, right? Like if it's off, you know, whatever. I would say if it doesn't affect your day-to-day -day schedule, the hour being yeah. thrown off one way or the other, I, I would personally just leave it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah. I, I, man, I can't remember what the fuck did I do. I know I must have just flipped or something like that right after the time switch uh, last time, or maybe I, I, I don't know. Here, boo, do you got some uh, autos in your garden you want to show us? Yeah, I got one. Here. Is that where all that beautiful natural light is coming from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, give her a bit of a far away shot of what I'm looking at here. But so there. Oh, oh. There's my cloner full of wonderful, amazing stuff. Ooh. Lots of Norfolk Island pine or pine. That's going to be our Christmas tree in a couple of years. Where Hell we yes. Hell yes to that. And then that's that's the good tent with all the good stuff right there. Right, I'll grab that height. Right. Lots. Right there. See, she's just starting to uh, flower up for us. Okay. Which one is that? That's a hashing dot. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I I'm digging it so far. It's oh, it looks great. Well, real happy. And then I've actually got this little thing here. Can I see that in the screen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this thing That's is so at least, a, it's like a month old. There and it's just like we're we're not killing it we're gonna let that do whatever the hell it wants and this is that's in my um my organic bin there i i went back to salts for a bit just so i could get my harvest weights back until i kind of get my because I'm, I'm very inconsistent with uh my organics but that's some carolina reapers right there and that's some mullen that's what what was the second thing mullen oh uh you, I use it for, uh, I, I've got a smoker's cough and I haven't had a cigarette in uh, about 11 years. So, Good job. Uh, Me too. Like I quit smoking cigarettes like probably about 11 years ago. Right on. Well, it was right around Super Bowl time. I can't remember if it was the week before or the week after, but it was one of those you're out drinking and you smoke three packs of cigarettes that night and you wake up and you're just, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm done. Actually, I got another cool one I can show size pot is that hashing got in that's a two gallon rick that it's in and actually i guess i could make this a little bit bigger too is that where you started it no i started off in a solo cup here's wow. my uh wow. Dad, that's so weird <laughs> right there now this is getting ready to come down like any time here but i just that is just the weirdest freaking thing it, yeah. it's it's fun. They, they, they <laughs> were a lot of fun. There's not much weight there, but I'm sure I probably could have bulked that up if I would have um, put more effort into it. What does this smell like? Um, Fruity fuel, maybe I'd say. Uh, if, you okay. would have, if you would have asked me a week ago, I would have told you fruit. And it changes. Yeah, there, I don't recall there being any... Um, any fruit smell or any sorry any fuel smell there uh up until kind of that whiff there that's the one that kind of usually it sits over in the corner out of the way because it's also just in a two gallon pot as an experiment here's my by when i got some freak shows for christmas uh not this last christmas the one before first thing i did was f2 them so we could uh, get more because they're cool and i only had 10 beans right and then 
I, when I moved in with the girlfriend here, we're not allowed to grow, as I've said, and she was very staunch on that. She was going to follow the rules. And I, I eventually, I, I managed to convince her to let me sprout some uh, the freak shows because it doesn't look like cannabis, right? Right. And we'll veg them out. And the whole time, I know that I'm going to flip these at some point in time. She's going to see budding cannabis and either she's going to let me grow a whole bunch of freak show or she's going to just let me go and grow normal cannabis again. And it kind of worked out really well that way. So it's, uh, but they're, they're such a slow, lethargic growing plant like it's yeah it's like you you've got to have a kind of real interest in them to keep them around but if at the same time what i'm looking at right here is about what i would have got off an auto uh when i would just typically just kind of keep on hanging out in the bedroom right uh not giving it any particular tlc and this you know it's a very cool plant so it's nice why not have fun. i wonder if it's because the leaves because the leaves are shaped that way that it doesn't grow so fast it could be if it well, must take a lot of energy to make those buds well if we rip one of these off and then we take i don't want to rip one of hypes off uh, let's see another leaf here yeah that's a good point obviously it so, doesn't get as much sunlight i guess we'll uh pop this up on uh spotlight again right for, so that's your typical leaf Okay, so you think of these as solar panels as we've that comparison often gets made, right? You look at here, like so much space. And then whereas you look at here, yeah. The, um uh oh what oh I just fucked my view up there. Uh hit something. Can you guys still see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh so you see like the uh leaves don't even really Back. start until part way up. And yeah. then they're already, they're serrated. They're not fully on in there, right? Or I don't know if you'd call it serrated. What the hell you call that? That, that, that needs an orthodontist is what that fucking that is. Is. Uh, <laughs> that, like, is, that is cool. So, so much less room. So there very yeah. well could be something to that. It doesn't have the chance to uh, just yeah. grasp and bring it all in like that. Now I got to figure out what I do. What, what I do. did you say that plant is? Freak yeah. show? Oh, Okay. Great show. And then wasn't uh, duck foot similar? Whereas, like, the, didn't the duck foot plant also have weird leaves like that? I think so. There's um another one now. Uh, what is it? There's a couple that have uh, real weird leaves. The one's uh, from Australia. What is it? That, um, Australian bastard? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I, I think there's another one that I'm, uh, I, I've just recently heard of that I can't really recall it was I, I i don't think i was necessarily but, uh, duck foot similar. whereas like the, didn't the duck foot plant also have weird leaf <laughs> what was just going on i don't know somebody somebody, somebody fucking with me <laughs> that's too funny um hey caribou can you put that leaf back up again please that freak show yeah I just okay, yeah. I, is it is it uh, is it common that when I look at one leaf, I it looks like one um, like okay, so one like, seems higher like higher than than the others. Like like in a conventional leaf, it's almost like they come out, you know, like the leaf comes out like but straight out from the bottom on each side. Where on this leaf. If on that stem, it looks like one leaf is coming out and then and then further up, another leaf comes out. Maybe. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. I think, no, I think over on the, on my right, uh, I thought I, closer, please. Or no, can we highlight? Uh, oh, yeah. Highlight. It's such highlight. a hard job for me to have to I, hit the button on. Right my, there. I, I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, well, my bad. No, it's my you. bad you because love. nothing but love for you. Because right. I'm, yeah, you're doing a great job of trying to show me, and I'm do, I'm yapping, and so it's on speaker. Uh, okay, you want, okay, let me look. Let me look. That is so weird looking. That is a freak. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's a fern, it, but it's a cannabis yeah. at the same time, which is so weird because I've never even seen a fern make a flower or or anything like that i mean ferns are just ferns, ferns? Yeah, it, it, 
I don't know. Because when you're before you actually see it bloom into cannabis, when you see just the pictures and you see the leaves that are you're actually growing there, you're like you kind of wonder, right? You believe it will, but you're kind of also semi skeptical. And then you see these big nugs and like. I got to tell you, like, it, it doesn't look like skanky weed. It's like, it, it looks like decent stuff. So this is the duck foot in that the leaf is sort of similar, but not quite to a cannabis leaf. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I don't know that they produce a lot. Well, actually, here's a picture of one producing a lot. Looks pretty tight. Oh, oh, there's okay. the leaf structure and then pretty decent looking bud. I can't tell how big it is, but it's nice and dark. Oh, it's I know. Yeah, a lot of purple going on there. I know. I love the purple too. I've, uh, Almost makes me want to give duck foot a try. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy looking. Uh, that bag of weed right there. I don't know if you can tell how purple that is, but that's that uh, purple oh. cushion of mine that I finally got trimmed up. Not a great harvest because I actually left uh, probably maybe even half of it on the plant because I didn't want to take off potential bud sites for re-vegging or uh, new uh, veg sites. Uh, so I, because I've never re-vegged a big full plant like that before. So I just wanted to leave as much on there as possible to give it as much chance because as uh, people have heard me yammer on about uh, that plant in the past, I, I want to keep that around just for how dark that is and breed with that. How long does it take uh, to re-veg average? I've been told like you can expect anything going to start popping back within a few weeks. And I think I've been re-vegging it yeah, about two weeks. So we'll see. I, I let it re-veg for about 10 days before I cut the buds off of it. Because I seem to recall that might have been actually uh, on the Grow From Your Heart podcast uh, a while, quite a while ago. I've talked about how he does that. The last seven to 10 days of his bloom cycle, he'll flip them over back to 18 and six because that extra light help uh, pound them and uh, make them grow up a little bit bigger, a little denser, and stuff like that. So, what? do you want to explain re vegging a bit? Uh, like, yeah. I've never really. Okay, so what, what I'm doing here is that that purple plant or you take any plant that say you, you, you can't clone it for whatever reason, or maybe you forgot to cut clones. That's the most likely scenario is you put it into bloom and you're like, I forgot to cut clones. That's the gorilla glue scenario. Actually, that's why I, I got to get a hold of Rick's because he's holding on to clones for me. Right. I was lucky enough that I actually gave him some so I can get him back. Um, but anyways, uh, you can, there's a few things you can do. You can cut clones off the plant while it's in flower and try and re-veg those clones i've got one going on in that cloner right now of that purple plant or you can just flip the plant itself back to 18 and 6 or whatever your uh, longer light cycle is and in theory over time it will throw new shoots out that would kind of look like a clone growing up and uh, just new vegetative growth I've never done one like that before. I've only ever done them from clone like a couple weeks into bloom when you just do that. Shit, I've done it again kind of thing. Uh, so, okay, we'll see, so we're, we're prepared to just kind of throw it. Like our furnace room is a great nursery area because it's always nice and warm in there um, and nobody goes in there. So I can just kind of leave a plant in there or plants, make sure it's got a good ample supply of butt chugging water and our nutrients right and just let it do its thing it'll be happy and eventually it'll start to and i think that okay. room is on so, a 20 hour cycle scenario okay. um we have the plant uh we switch it into flower it's a couple days in and we're like fuck we got to reveg because we didn't take clones so we switch it back over now the stuff that's already like been growing is that now gonna like die off the buds gonna stay like will the shock be too much or does it just remain like that and then new stuff starts growing like how does that work are you talking about like the buds dying off or just the overall plant structure no like say you didn't it buds didn't even form yet you switched it before they even formed but okay. like now is that part of the plant kind of no good anymore okay or? so actually i've got a 
another good example of that. It's at the back of the tent. It might be a bitch to get at, but okay. I've got a space dose from hurt and Albertan uh, here. Um, and that got, it's called, is that monster cropping or super cropping? What one or the other, uh, the other one is being rough with your plants and kind of bending and snapping them and stuff. Yeah. And, um, so you re -veg it or you flip it and let it do its thing for a little bit. And then kind of the scenario we're just talking about, Oh shit, I didn't cut clones. My scenario is I was looking for sex. I was sexing plants and I had a whole bunch of stuff in solo cups. So I just did that way and then flipped it back. But when you do that, they get real bushy. I, they start throwing off all sorts of new growth and though you'll see a lot of crazy three bladed leaves or maybe one bladed leaves. And even those leaves look fucked up. Like that, that it's just, you'll see it. They grow a weird angle. Okay. Thank you. Because my plant re vegged and I didn't even know it because I have some single leaf fucking things coming out. And I was like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's kind of weird. And uh, then I noticed another one and I, I, I had a feeling like they looked really, the one plant looked really weird for a couple days. And I said like something weird's going on with this plant. And somebody told me that I was giving it too much light and to just like turn the light off for a day. But I think that's what it was, is it had re-vegged somehow. So you, yeah. Actually, I don't know much of Rick, um, did you, with your LEDs, I, I, I seem to recall you having to turn um, uh, one of your LEDs down or sets of LEDs because they're just too, too much turned up, right? Wait, wait, was, um, was that a, was a sign of, a, a, of the damage you saw? Was uh, weird growth, like one-bladed leaves or anything? Yeah. Not, not to my recollection, no. It was just the, the way the leaves danced. I, or I could tell that they were getting too much. But do you fo foliar feed your plants anything? Uh, Green goddess, no? no. Uh, um, when they're in veg and maybe like the first couple of weeks of flower, once they start making buds, then I don't, I don't foliar at all. So because yeah. I'm growing in organic soil, I just like ordered a whole bunch of um, fungus snap predators, nematodes, stuff like that to help mainly get rid of all the thrips and um, fungus gnats. Not, not that they're that big of a deal, but um, that and uh, just any other pest issue that may be coming up that, you know, I can't foliar spray and I have a living soil bed. So might as well just put some beneficial bugs to use. Um, what do you use for th thrips? Before I was using things like spinosad and sulfur when they're in the veg phase, a little bit back and forth, other than trying to keep up with the plant's immunity. So I don't know if you guys heard of Korean natural farming, but I made a few of their inputs and I do the maintenance spray while they're in veg. Like I like to boost their immunity instead of just attacking them with like spinosad. Not that spinosad is that bad. I think sulfur is actually pretty good for the plants. Ever since I started using sulfur, like they look like they're sucking in that sulfur very nicely and they just look pretty great after having it. You just gotta like, um, I don't know because uh, sulfur will kind of leave a residue. So some people will say you spray on the sulfur and then like you wait a few hours and then you wash it off. It doesn't make any sense to me to wash it off immediately. Um, what else do I like to foliar spray with? Um, I like to do like a little silica and aloe, something like that. It's usually just oh. for the plant health. Sometimes like EM1 microbials. And sometimes it's just, um, sometimes it's specifically for pest management of grips. And other times it's just to boost the plant's immunity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know yeah. what? You know what I also like? Um, it's called, um, fuck, I forgot the name of what it's called. Let me go grab the ball really quick. I want to show it to you guys because it's actually pretty cool. Oh. She's running out and doing that. Uh, can we do a dab for DP? Uh, DP's been uh, struck down with the COVID. So uh, I think that's probably why he's not here tonight. This should have been the very first thing. Yeah. Did, right? DP. Yeah. We love you, brother. This dab frog is for you. And uh, yeah. hopefully you get better real soon, man. We're thinking about you. We love you. Oh, right oh, I hope you feel better. So um, I also like uh, mixing up yucca with um, um, full power. And sometimes I like using this stuff, spraying rubber. 
It's really tight. It's got iron and zinc. If I use this just once in a while, the plants look beautiful right after using it. And they grow like they push a little bit more right after using that. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. and uh, fermented plant juice. I like spring fermented plant juice. I mix it up. I don't do just one thing only. I mix it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much covers it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I use uh, I use kelp. Uh, um, well, yes. I, I use I use Dr. Zymes and um, I can't think of everything all the time. But that was the reason I asked earlier, Green Goddess, what if you were using any foliar because uh, where kelp can be uh, can you know be very beneficial if you use too much. Yeah, you can grow extra leaves and so on. <laughs> It's uh, interesting that some people's gardens and their plant leaves have like nine leaves. And so yeah. what makes someone's, if like someone was growing and it was like getting towards uh, mid flower and their plant leaves started dwindling down, like if there's just three leaves instead of five or seven, what does that mean? Like, is it lacking something or possibly too much of something also? It's a lot to try to figure out, but yeah, I'm it, it, always yeah. curious. Why do some people's leaves have like nine leaves and other people have like three? Three, yeah. 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 Subject for another day. <laughs> pass a, <laughs> we'll pass the buck on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But you were saying earlier, uh, and thank you, by the way, for uh, sharing your knowledge. Uh, uh, re uh, you were talking about the, the month of April and you uh, devoted something every day for, uh, for health. Uh, and while it's on my mind, can you uh, shout out your, uh, your social media and then tell us a little bit more about uh, what went on as the topics uh, during that month of April? So, um, on Instagram, I'm a green, Greens Goddess, Greens with a Z, of course. That's like the difference between me and the other beautiful Green Goddess. Um, so basically what I do is um, I run lunagardens.co. It's a nonprofit, and uh, we just want to help educate people about cannabis medicine and how it helps heal. And I'm also a caregiver in Colorado. So I got a few patients, and this is basically Basically, what I'm doing is growing their medicine for them. And like I was talking about pulling out the harvest and then processing all that into oils and very busy with that. That's exactly what I do for my patients is make those oils. So um, what I wanted to do during the month of April was, and Instagram's always tricky because it's got to be pictures. So I had to figure out how can I get these words that I want to share on a picture. So I just took the time to be at home and do like some, I don't know, photo editing as best as I could make it. And um, I always share a post each day. So it was during that week of 420 that I shared a post on um, different cannabinoids and their benefits and different terpenes and their benefits. You can see that um, if you go to my page, there's some... Like there's these top things across the top bar. Um, one will say shows, it talks about all the shows that I've been on and I'm gonna add this one to it tomorrow morning. And uh, one right next to it says cannabis edu and cannabis edu, if you click on that, it's got like all those posts that I had shared. And I'm gonna go and do it some more, um, especially this coming up April. You know, life just gets so busy. You get really carried away with all the work that you've got to do. And um, you can only do, like, I can only do so much trying to work on this nonprofit. I mean, I just like share educational information with people so they understand how cannabis works. So it's like our way of advocating it. They don't have to be so afraid or think that it's anything terrible. It's really not. And it's really helped out a lot of people. We just need to share a better understanding of what it can do. <laughs> You know, you're here. So I make, um, I passed out stickers and I got like flyers and stuff like that. And on the flyer, it just talks about the endocannabinoid system and cannabis in general, mainly about CBD and THC because it's a small flyer. I could only write so much. But I pass those out all over Colorado, like any other state that I visit. If a place is cool enough to like let me leave flyers, then I'll leave them. Um, I like putting up stickers because a lot of places don't take those stickers down. And, um, you know, it's just a simple message. Cannabis can help people heal. 
there is scientific research to prove it. If you want to learn more, we'll show you how. Check out our website. You know, Fantastic. so I do basically the same thing you do, but I work at an indigenous dispensary. And the amount of people that come in that are afraid because, you know, they you don't have questions. But yeah. they'll be on like a crazy prescription painkiller. You know what I mean? That's what blows my mind is somebody is just a okay with like taking a morphine, but then like they're afraid to take a little bit of cannabis. It, it blows my and, mind. And morphine is like too much. I could totally understand when the right time is for somebody to take in a small amount, but then their body gets so used to it and it craves more. Yeah. And if they always talk about cannabis being a, a entrance drug, it's not a, or a gateway drug. It's not, it's an exit drug. Like yes. if you're having a hard time on drugs and if you try getting off of them, you start getting in a lot of pain or you start having issues, try cannabis instead. Totally. You would yeah. probably want to start with the high THC and just every once in a while, you could very slowly try to lower that dose just a little bit at a time. Um, taking uh, some tolerance breaks, short, small tolerance breaks. If you feel like your THC tolerance is way too high. Yeah. Like especially people who dab a lot. No offense. I love you guys. But if you dab way too much, you have a super high tolerance. Or if you and it's hard. So every night. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I used to I used to make a uh, bubble hash and rosin for this company called Fresh Bake when I worked over there. Yeah. And man, I'd be dabbing all the time. Like I put that shit on top of a bowl, and and it would get real <laughs> fucked up, really fucked up for a short period of time. That's what I liked about dabs. If, if you're in the right area, you could get really, 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 really fucked up for like maybe about half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour if you're lucky, depending on how much you took. And then after that, it just kind of wears off. Totally. And I find like a dab high is a really like the only word I can describe it is like it's a really clear high. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's not like, you know, even if you smoke um, some flower that is uplifting, you're still going to get burnt out eventually. Right. At, oh, or, yeah. or just be like kind of hazy. Right. Where dabs don't do that to me. It's a really like clear high. <laughs> love the taste. Like I that would be my taste. main addiction to dabbing is just the flavor is so pure. You're yeah. like, man, I had no clue that this flower could, because <laughs> it's no, not. Totally. <laughs> yeah. The terps really come out for sure. That's so true. Oh, man. <laughs> so I found the stuff I was talking about, Uncle Rick. It's called Grow Tech Synergy. Has anybody ever heard of that? No? Well, fuck. <laughs> I'm sure somebody would have heard of it. What is that? Um, so, my God, I am not going to be able to pronounce these fucking words, but I'm sure <laughs> you guys can. You can do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't who, know. How to who do sold it, it to you? Micro, mycorrhiz. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 That's uh, good. So there's three words with a letter M. I'm not going to even yeah. attempt to pronounce the other two, but it's okay. just, that's all it is. Uh, go for it. Oh, beneficial bacteria? What's that, sorry? Beneficial bacteria? Yeah. yeah, so basically I asked for like something like recharge. Um, yeah. Well, and this is what they suggested. Yeah. What other ingredients are in there though? Um, it's so small and I'm so blind. <laughs> She's like, I got my glasses. Uh, <laughs> oh, girl. Okay. I have my glasses. That's what they do. When, you work in the, when you work in the industry, you really don't get good benefits. Oh, fuck. I don't have any benefits at all, actually. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it looks. So I work on a reserve, uh, like we're all native. Uh, okay. We actually weren't even on the books until last January. Um, we because you don't have to when you work on the reserve. 
but our boss did, which is awesome because then we do get the benefits if we get, if something happens and we're not working or whatever. Cool. Um, Just uh, give me the, uh, what's the name of the thing again? It's called Grow Tech. So tech is with a K. Yeah. And no W, just G-R-O. Oh, thank you. Yep. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, I just had a, the fear went, just came through me. Like, you know, like a lot of people grew up with uh, calculators and computers <laughs> and shit. When I fucked up when I was typing, it was like, get out the, you know, stop, roll up the carry, get out the white out and try to cover that letter that you yep. fucked up. Now I just go, doot, doot, gone. Okay, yep. anyway, grow tech. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> synergy okay okay Let's see what we got here yeah like there's no way i can read the fucking ingredients it's uh -huh. so friggin small yeah yeah um, i you know what i like before my computer i uh it's too slow but anyway um well, here we go yeah Fuck feel free to use guy. it but do um, yourself No, sorry, I can't. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I'll just uh, share the screen for a second or two, and uh, then uh, people can uh, read it themselves and uh, and share. There we go, and share. And uh, what was? I can't read that. that. Oh, okay. I hear it is. Here it is. <laughs> Feel free to yeah. Oh, oh, that's uh, that's very sad. That's okay, long. I get it. I get it. I yeah. Somebody else said yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sharing doesn't work. Sharing doesn't work. I got um recharge. That, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, feel free to uh, feel free to use that product. I'll uh, just but flip do it yourself around, a, and y'all could read the ingredients. Do yes. yourself a favor I'm and uh, get the recharge. Yeah. I just I. Yeah. spent so much money over the last little while I, like, <laughs> I gotta like take it easy on the money <laughs> how much was that and how uh, much this it was it was pricey so this is one of the things that like when I went to the grocery store I just went a little crazy and I was like I need this <laughs> and I need this <laughs> this was uh oh, I hate to even say it <laughs> yeah but uh, you know That's you don't need 60 dollars yeah but get... yeah well, but... that is a pretty big container though for that size i'm pretty sure like a bag of a small bag of recharge like this is anywhere between 20 and 30 dollars yeah but i hardly i hardly use it like half a teaspoon of water per per gallon mm. oh. i go back and forth between this and great white and if I, if like, usually I do my own microbial tea, but I really like diversity. So, and um, these ones have like beneficial bacteria and fungi. I'm not 100% sure what's even in my compost tea. So, but I, I like to mix it up. Sometimes I do great white. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll do my compost tea. I've been, I've been playing around with this trick um, where you take um, a cup of, of fish uh, compost, like Oli Mountain compost. And then you take a cup of worm castings and you add um, a little bit of oatmeal flour and a little bit of Bokashi and a little bit of what's something else. Um, well, well, I do cornmeal and oatmeal, but um, Bokashi and something else. Recently, I tried it with biochar. But you get a little bit wet, you put it in a container and you leave the lid on with a slight crack and you just let it sit in a warm place, dark, where it's dark and covered. And uh, within about three to four days, uh, fungi starts growing off the top of that. So I take that, I break it up, I put it into like a little tea bag sack and I put that into my bucket to make compost tea with. I mean, you can't say it's super duper fungi, but I mean, it started off pretty fungi compared to not. <laughs> So yep, I, I've been sure. playing around with that every once in a while. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Green Goddess, I know that crops, uh, it, it is expensive. Uh, the good news is you don't need very much of it. Uh, yeah. And the, the, the results are amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, if for nothing else, just for the health and happiness of the plant. Um, yeah. yeah. No, totally. I have heard nothing but good stuff about it. So I, I now that Christmas is over, I will order some, but <laughs> I had to wait till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, green goddess, uh, greens uh, goddess. I know. <laughs> and I <agree> to <laughs> <take> there. <laughs> We we need to yeah, change it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would be interested to hear uh, your uh, recipe for oil for the oils that you uh, make. Oh yeah, I've been looking up some stuff online just to see if there's anything new that I could try out. But the thing is, with my oils, like people could put it in their food or under their tongue, or they could put it on their skin. So I don't want to mess around with too much stuff with flavor just to make it taste better for some people because I, I'm just not sure if that would be okay for them to put it on their skin is all. So I need to dabble a little bit more into essential oils in general, I guess. But um, I just use a basic recipe where I take like an ounce of cannabis and the strain depends on like what your ailments are that you're trying to heal with it. So you want to make sure that you're growing and harvesting a strain with those specific cannabinoids and terpenes to help out with your ailment. Take about an ounce of that, put it in a cup of, um, I do it in the crock pot and uh, oils in the droppers. I'll use MCT coconut oil. Um, let's see, one cup of oil per one ounce of weed. And then I'll add in a spoonful of a lechon, such as sapphire oil or sunflower oil. Yeah. And I let that go in the crock pot on warm, very low for about, um, personally, I do it for four hours. I feel like four hours is enough time. If you were to do it for six hours, it's no big deal. Four to six hours. If you're not going to be at home, you don't got to stress about being there on time. Um, but yeah, I just let the oil soak in the cannabis. Now you could choose before you put your cannabis in your oil, in your crock pot, you could choose to decarb it if you want cannabinoids in their full form, or you could choose to not decarb it if you want cannabinoids in their acidic form, which means taking on THCA, CBDA instead of THC, because when you decarb it, you're changing it from it in its acidic form to non-acidic so it'd be thc cbd some of the oils i like playing around with i'll do half of it decarbed and half of it non-decarbed just to see what happens and go get it tested so yeah. i got a place out where i could get it tested at so cool. um okay. so when your oil after your four to six hours is up then you strain it through a strainer and cheesecloth i do two layers of cheesecloth and i pour it through a strainer and under the strainer it goes into a metal bowl the metal bowl has like a little lip on it. <laughs> and I just let it sit there for maybe about half an hour or so. If you can let it sit for longer, go ahead because it's just letting all the oil kind of come down. Then I tie it up. And when you tie it up, you could put it in a Ziploc bag and stick it in your freezer and use that for a later day. I think that's called a poultice. I've never personally used it, but I have heard you could take that out and let it soak in your bath. Then you could have a nice cannabis filled bath that you just soak your whole entire body in if your whole entire body is in pain um or like say if you're hurting and you just want to take it out as an ice pack just put that that i mean the oil is still on it so you could take oh. that um it's like it's it's uh when i tie up i'll have to share a picture i guess it's when i tie up the cheesecloth real tight so it's like a little cannabis bun um then you have yeah. your oil left over you pour it into another smaller container with the lip and then you pour it individually into bottles as long as you refrigerate it in my opinion it doesn't really expire a lot of people say that it does but here's the thing i have made cannabis oil and butter one day and i had put them in the fridge uh a few days later the butter had grown mold on it and the oil did not because the mct coconut oil and regular coconut oil i guess it's antibacterial, antimicrobial. So they're not going to have anything growing on them. So as long as I store it in the fridge somewhere where it's cold and out of direct sunlight, they should be able to last a lot longer. 
Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, the only thing that does break down is the actual uh, cannabinoids in it. But over it a, time, time, yeah. a long time. Yeah. So I totally agree with you. You're going to use it well before it's going to expire, even if you dare. Yeah, sure. yeah, no, that's awesome. The other thing you could do is, um, man, I love putting it in regular uh, virgin coconut oil because that will get thick when it's cold. And with that, I love making um, uh, brownies. <laughs> okay. And you can cook anything with that. Uh, that I'll also put in a pill. That way the pill stays solid as long as the pill stays in the fridge. Yep. If it's MCT coconut oil, it will always stay liquid. So yeah. and then it, and it wow. gets messy and it will leak out. It's slimy. <laughs> one, yeah. one patient told me it's slimy. I'm like, sorry, girl. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. And and other options, to but... answer your question earlier, you were talking about the essential oils. Um, I do know that essential oils can be bad on like an open cut. So if you're using it like you know, for can't like skin cancer or something like that, it might be okay with those essential oils, but if, that's what I'm thinking of when like someone's got pain somewhere and they just want to put the cream on the outside yeah, totally. in condition like eczema or something. Yep. I think it would, it'd be fine for all of that. Just not an, uh, an open cut or something like that. Yeah, I, I personally wouldn't recommend putting my cannabis oil on an open cut, although yeah. there have been some studies shown um, with CBD because it helps the skin. I'm like, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend. It. I always tell, uh, like, if, it, if anyone's taking it and they have a cut, wait for yeah. your cut to heal and then put it on to help heal up that scar so eventually oh, it'll yeah. fade faster. That's okay. exactly what I say too. Yeah. And what people don't realize is like, it doesn't have to be completely healed, but as long as like that, that last yep. layer is healed mm -hmm. and it can't actually go through, then you should be okay. Yeah. Cause like, if you're talking about someone who had gotten like say major surgery and they have a lot of pain in this area and they do not want to take in cannabis then yeah. what they want to do is put something around that area, but not on the wound itself or, or yeah. I would say within a few inches of the wound. But to, to, if you are trying to get rid of the majority on the outside of the pain or inflammation, yeah. but just don't get too close until it's yeah. healed. Like you said, <laughs> that once it's closed, they kind of come in a little bit closer. Just, just be very careful. For sure. Yeah, so that's one thing I was, uh, another thing that I wanted to make next was some cream. Yeah. I really want to cream, but I'm not sure which essential oil to get because I would like it to be beneficial for pain and healing, like wound healing or something. For sure. No, definitely. No. I can maybe find out. Uh, I know a girl that works with <laughs> oils. I'll try to Sorry. find you. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm done. What were you, what were you saying? <laughs> What were you saying? You know, you know somebody. Oh, uh, I know, I know somebody that uh, works with essential oils. So I'll, I'll try to ask her what she uses in hers. Oh, good idea. Thank you. Yeah, we you're should welcome. give each other's emails and email each other back and forth. Yeah, totally. Cool. Yeah, uh, I, I know Caribou's had a little experience with the salves and so on. Maybe he gives a couple of tips when he gets back. Yeah. He had, he had to go number one or something. I don't know. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, shoot. Uh, what a great evening. Okay, so oh, was it this year that you, um, uh, I, I got to refer to my green goddess. Was it, uh, was it this uh, 2021, that, uh, April, that you uh, did this uh, deal? The month of April? Uh, was it, or was it even yeah, earlier? I think it was. If you'd like all the same information is on my website, lunagardens.co. I go on there and I talk about um, cannabinoids, terpenes, the endocannabinoid system is all on the front page. 
And then if you want to look up, like if you have a specific ailment or disease in the top corner is like the menu bar. If you click on it and click on ailments, I've written blogs in the past about um, which cannabinoids or which type of method or which terpenes you might want to look for that can help out with that specific ailment or disease. That's really awesome. I like that. Yeah, that, that's incredible. That's fantastic. How, how long have you had your website up? Oh, man, when did I start? I started Luna Gardens when I quit working at Fresh Baked because <laughs> I was, I, there is this thing going around and that's when CBD was all hot at the time. And um, it was even on CNN where they were talking about how CB, uh, CBD has helped heal or has helped uh, some kids that had epilepsy and whatnot. Oh, okay. And I remember. Like, yeah. Oh man. I kept this picture up when I was at work. I would look at that picture all the time. And I just felt like, I wish I could do something. And so um, I, I felt like maybe there was a calling or a bigger purpose. And, uh, uh, and uh, it was time for me to leave and to go and pursue my own dream, like a way of trying to be able to help out other people. So that's one thing when we were talking about autos earlier, I wish I could learn how to grow them great. That way I could teach somebody else, hey, if you wanna grow your own medicine, check this out. So this is my um, Instagram. And see here, we got like this menu bar. So um, this first one is cannabis edu. So if you wanted to look on here, it just kind of, um, uh, thank you, Neverwinter Farms. I see you. <laughs> uh, That's my buddy, Sean Russell. I love him. Uh, hey, listen. So, I, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say that actually, I think you are capable, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but of sharing your screen. You can bring up your webs uh, to confuse. Oh, no, wait. You're on a computer. Yeah, no, I cheat. I got two screens here. So. Man, I don't want to get technical. Uh, I'm uh, probably going to make uh, it, Luna. Luna. <laughs> Could you type your website in the chat? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Even you. Even throw a link in there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because I would like to check it out as well. Okay, that one I can't. You're going to be like, ah, oh, the delay. <laughs> uh, I, uh, if anybody knows me in technology, I, uh, so I, I got, I, this is true confession. So, uh, you know, like I don't go looking for people in Instagram, uh, but if somebody follows me, I follow, you know, I think it's only polite that you follow them. And that's kind of, you know, I am taking when, when somebody follows me, I do take a just a few little moments and to click on their site and learn a little bit about them. I but, love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I, absolutely. I, I, I'm do I do more and more of that. I, I really enjoy it. But uh, I just can't keep up with it. I, it takes too much of my time. Uh, so uh, true confessions. I uh, uh, I brought up Instagram and went looking for your uh for your site and I found it. The good news is I found oh, it, but yeah, good. bad, bad news. I wasn't following you. And, uh, and you know, I've known you for, I, I've known, I, say it again. <laughs> I've known, I've known of you. I've seen you so much uh, throughout the, uh, the uh, uh, internet uh, yet. I wasn't following you. So I went to fall. So good. The bad news. I wasn't following good news. Well, you've got a private site, so I kind of wait for you to give me permission. To, oh. <laughs> ho hopefully, hopefully, maybe one day you'll give me permission. But uh, I should well, be able to I find your that, website. I, I don't get, I, don't get um, I, I think I don't get kicked off or threatened by Instagram to be kicked off because I keep my stuff private. Ah, there's okay. so many people that cool. would share a picture of a leaf. And then Instagram is like, uh, you can't do that. No, I yeah. get it. Yeah. I get I it. I'm private too. Um, where what? Okay, hold on. Oh, pretty high. Pretty high. How high are you, Uncle Rick? Oh man. I, What's your well, name on Instagram then? Google. It's uh, Lefty Buds. Dang it. 
I don't yeah. know. Doesn't Rick have like three or four Instagram accounts? Because I'm pretty sure there's like Uncle <laughs> Rick and then there's something before that. I think there might be an Uncle Rick too. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't he have three or we four discords? And now it's just <laughs> let's be buds. I think. It, okay. None of it's none of it's easy. Oh my god. Uh all part of losing your mind, Uncle Rick. It's all right. <laughs> I guess I gotta put in more than Luna Gardens. Maybe it should be lunagardens.com. <laughs> no, dot co as a matter of fact. We got now. Oh well, well because if I was to buy LunaGardens.com, it would be super expensive. That place, there's a restaurant out in LA. It's super cute. Somehow they're supposed to have the website, but they don't have the website. And I could buy the website if I paid like um, a ridiculous amount, more than five hundred bucks a year. I thought that was stupid. Or I could take LunaGardens.co and spend like a hundred bucks a year. That sounds more ideal to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, yes. Yeah, I, 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 I take some of that philosophy too. Uh, uh, I guess if you want to, if you're just into promote a, a big, uh, big numbers, big audience, I guess maybe you'd, but, uh, or, or if you, if it was a profitable situation for profit thing then yeah maybe the 500 bucks is worth it but if you're for if you're non-profit uh in the first place wow you're really throwing out the uh info here this is wonderful this is i wanted to make it easy for for anybody to get a uh an understanding on the very first page yeah and then if you wanted to get more information on something you could you know you could click on it to learn more specifically about that particular very nice and you said uh yeah you click on for different ailments and uh yeah actually you mentioned uh, uh you mentioned uh on cnn and dr gukpa and he and uh, the deal with epilepsy i'm epilepsy. trying to think yeah, I'm trying to think how far that was back, but uh, apparently there's another show coming up uh, uh, on CNN uh, on uh, autism. So good. good. I have um, I have a one autism patient at the moment, and uh, if anyone lives in the state of Colorado and they could get their medical license, I'm definitely willing to take on more. Um, one thing that we have worked, and he's a bit older. Uh, but one thing that has really worked for him was the one-to-one -one oil, equal amounts of CBD and THC. And it's very low. Like there, it's not a huge percentage of milligrams. He didn't need a lot. He just needed to kind of just kind of relax and be in the moment and focus and not get too hypersensitive and too emotional about when things happen around him. It helped him out a lot. And then um, we did something else to try to help him sleep. Like when I was talking about taking down this plant later where it has mostly amber trichomes, it, chances it would have more CBN cannabinoids in it. And that could help people with sleep. So I like doing that and then turning that into um, like cannabis oil, like the virgin coconut oil, like infusing it in that oil and then using that oil to make it edible, like just cannabis chocolate or my favorite cannabis brownies. And if someone needed help sleeping at night, that's what they would take. I'm also putting it in pills. So I like the virgin coconut oil better for sticking in a pill because you can leave it in the fridge and it'll be solid. So um, I really like, uh, I think that those help out a lot. It really depends on the age of the person and their condition, but I also have like CBD oils and I'm gonna have some CBG ones too, which really help out a lot with epilepsy. So if there's something that you're interested, you might like what we were talking about earlier, first, you've got to grow that medicine first and then decide how either if it's for you or if it's for someone who you care about, decide how they're going to want to take it. And then after you harvest, dry and cure, do what you would normally do and then process it into, into uh, infuse it into coconut oil. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Um, the autism topic, um, David Suzuki also did like years and years ago, did a really cool episode on cannabis and autism. And it, it was really, really cool. Uh, huh. So I'm sure you guys can find it out there if you search it up or whatever, but it was interesting. <laughs> Well, There's most a lot of, us... of studies being done on, on cannabis with autism. Mm-hmm. It's really amazing because that's how we are narrowing down. Well, what's this cannabinoid doing? What does this terpene do? And what does this variety do? You know, just kind of the idea of the entourage effect, keeping everything together you know, versus separating it. But some people can't do research that way. So they have to do research the way where you, we're only talking about CBD specifically, you know. Yeah, but um, uh, I really like that that's just becoming more and more and more popular because we're waking people up to the idea that this really is medicine and people take it differently for medicinal purposes. And if you smoked once and you didn't like it and it gave you extreme paranoia, maybe that is not right for you. Yeah. And things in your life change. Sometimes you might get older. Something might have happened to you. Now, all of a sudden, you need to take THC. And you just kind of get used to doing it. My dad took my chocolates once. I thought it was funny. He he's just like uh, he's the worst. <laughs> I, I love my dad, but he talks so much shit about what I do. It's like I suppose in every uh, hero's journey has to be that one person that should be supporting them that kind of doesn't, you know, and maybe pushes them and and just fucks with them all the time and always got to say something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he, he took my chocolate so now if i'm talking to someone and i'm explaining cannabis medicine and he comes in he goes oh it's just snake oil then i'll tell the person because he interrupted my conversation what he said was very rude then i'll tell the person oh did i ever tell you about the time my dad took my edibles and got high <laughs> and they're like what <laughs> you would do that like they're so shocked you know he would never and i'm like oh yeah he did like <laughs> <laughs> They were my mom and uh, she had retired from work. So I made her some chocolates and uh, he didn't know. He didn't know. I put that in quotation marks because anything I cook, he asks, is there cannabis in here? Uh, no, dad, it's macaroni and cheese for the kids. There's no cannabis in here. <laughs> so, so he knew I made these chocolates. He knew I made them for mom. He went and took not one, folks, but two. <laughs> I'm just thinking after that first one, don't you taste the cannabis and the chocolate flavor? Like, are, aren't you questioning what's that odd flavor that's in this chocolate? I guess yeah. I'll try another. <laughs> really hard to t- hide the taste of cannabis and chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> he was so upset. I mean, that poor guy, he was so mad. Like, why would anyone want to feel this way? <laughs> and then uh, he was freaking out, didn't know what to do. And I told my mom, I said, just put on a comedy Get him some snacks, get him some water, let him chill out in his chair and put on a comedy and have a great time. (laughs) Maybe you should take some chocolates too. The two of you will have so much fun. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Thank you. My my father is a lifelong cannabis user. He smoked it as long as I remember. And I feel like I always knew I was going to one day smoke it. But we're talking back before we do about medical advancements and stuff like that. My mom used to fucking straight up whoop my fucking ass for smoking weed in or around the house, just coming home stoned, right? It was that day and age where like that kind of stuff still happened. And now I, when I started growing uh, for myself uh, a little over five years ago, five and a half years ago, a couple months later, I went to go see them and I brought them some clones and stuff. like. It was actually like a cloning dome with rooted clones and stuff. And I wrapped the dome up in, um, wrapping paper so that he would have to unwrap it because it was there for his birthday now that I think about it right and they've been growing ever since now for the medicinal aspects like my dad and my, my mom she, apparently she smokes very once in a while I've still have never seen it it's a myth as far as I'm concerned but she's into the oils and making creams and stuff like that okay. and, and um you know and so it's kind of cool I had a really I think they've the kids so if they've been growing for about five years like I was just saying and but they've ne- always been the they give it water and that's about it if they can survive on that and the plant will and you'll get smokable cannabis doing that but they just never cared enough to pay attention and then i think that's kind of starting to change i left them some plants um 
this last February that we did a bunch of stuff with them indoors and then a bunch of those made their way outdoors for the outdoor season and dad kind of got excited um I had some cannons sitting at their place uh just you know, I, I don't have room to store them here so they're sitting there use it if you want right it's free throw equipment think of it that way and then all of a sudden my dad went and got himself a three by three tent and I heard about Hell this yeah I, I, so I'm just like, oh shit, dad's got the bug. Cause the other thing I should mention is I had a four by four tent going in their room. They live four hours away, but um, I had to get all my genetics out of my certain living situation and out of there, lest they disappear on me or something crazy like that. Right. So dad was babysitting them and where they used to grow was in their bathroom, just off their bedroom. And <laughs> realizes just how much better. Oh. So dad's rocking this three by three tent, a long winded way of uh, getting to this. So last time I go up there, I bring him one single clone of orange gas and just, here you go, dad. This is probably the highest quality genetics that you've ever run. Although you have run some pretty good stuff that I've given you in the past. And he's just doing one plant in this three by three. And I've had two conversations with him now about growing where a, he's really excited about growing and I might even be able to get him to pH his fucking nutrients and stuff, uh, which would be like, wow. Um, <clears throat> And just seeing how this thing grows like a bush. So basically a fucking shrub hedge is what he's explaining it as. Yeah. And then the other thing aspect is about how um, I'm a third generation forester, which makes him uh, generation number two. This is a guy that's been running up and down the sides of fucking mountains his whole life. Um, I, we need, and yeah. is needing a knee well, replacement. I like hiking. To that, right? And so he's got the aches and pains because he's in his 60s, 4, 65. Yeah, well, if you're right? running, it's really bad on your knees. Yeah. And so now he's, he's using the muscle rubs and stuff like that. And he's just like, you, you know, so we had a really animated discussion where I, like, I can't believe how excited my dad is about this. And I mentioned to him, I think it was when I was up there the previous time that I knew someone over in Ontario that has access to uh, testing equipment potentially. So now my dad actually wants to know what he's actually, he starts thinking about that. Well, what, with, with what he's growing with whether he puts little attention to it or a lot of attention he's making himself medicine and now he wants to know he's interested in his cannabinoid content of and it might just be a coconut cream and just cannabis that might be as far as an elaborate as they get but it does work because i use that same recipe myself that was where we started off with it right but i just wow. i think it's cool so my dad's talking about he, he like cbds and c and thc so those are the two cannabinoids he knows about well i go up there i i think i've got the same pack of mad dog 22 seeds you mentioned earlier that sounds Ooh, really familiar from Hoku seeds, i'm really excited about those so hey it's now pretty soon maybe i can get him talking about that so imagine this poor guy wait down well not poor dad he's lived a hard life right uh it is what it is but he's aching and painting is what i'm getting at what if we yeah, can get him yeah. some of this? So, uh, cause he's not a big pill popper, never has been, or right? he'll take it for if he's got a migraine or if we could get him just maybe edibles or a little bit of this and all of a sudden dad's all right. I just, I think. About right. it. Is this something when, he wants to take internally? Like his whole body hurts or is it like just a couple spots? I, I, I think it's, I think he'd say it's probably a few spots that are significantly worse than the rest, but I imagine that he's just tired, worn out and just, beat up kind of feeling probably know. looking for more like something for pain and inflammation like the cbg ones off that mad dog yeah i get it and then, um if if i don't know how old your dad is but thc has been okay not that not that old but <laughs> at least i mean just my dad that's funny <laughs> um thc has been known to help people with alzheimer's okay. so um not that he needs it yet well, well, I tell him, he, he uh, a, I make fun of him for maybe Alzheimer's, but let's just, that's purely in jest as far as I can tell. Um, I don't know if it, my dad's like losing his hearing or if he just like screaming at people all the time, but that's the thing that's been happening lately. A lot of yelling. <laughs> I'm looking at him like, dad, I'm sitting right next to you. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Hey, Caribou, how old did you say your dad was? I'm a, I think he's 64, 65. I, yeah. I don't know. Some people might be like, you're a terrible son. You don't know how old your father is. And you know what? I, I wouldn't even know how old I was if my kids didn't freaking tell me. So, so yeah. I, re I recall talking to my dad, rest his soul, uh, about another person who had just passed. And uh, I, I can't remember who it was, uh, but it could have been a family member. Can't remember. 
Anyway, I said to my dad, I said, uh, so how old was he? And my dad told me. And I said, oh, well, uh, you know, he lived a good life. And my dad looked at me with these big eyes because I didn't realize that my dad was older than this guy at the time. So I put my foot in my mouth there. And, uh, <laughs> hey, Uncle Rick, how did your parents feel about, about cannabis and weed? Like, you know, were you smoking it when you were living at their house? Like, did they ever catch you with it or something? Uh, no, no. Actually, I didn't start. I didn't start cannabis until I was almost 20. But um, that's probably yeah. best for your sake because you would, if I grew up in the age where it was legal to whoop your fucking kid's ass, like straight up <laughs> murder was probably fucking going on in your day and age. So, oh, I still got a couple of whoopings. Yeah, no problem there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just glad that I'm young enough that I didn't have to take the canings at school and stuff like that. That would have been fucking. My dad had to do that. They they were they were whipping people's hands when he was going. <laughs> well, it actually, you know, I think Get about there. that. I just had a thought. Like I've got bad hands. But I've broken them a bunch of times and sir, bad circulation and shit like that. I'm running a vibrating equipment all day long and stuff like that. You think if if I had gone through canings and stuff like that where they would whack your hands, just how much worse permanent injuries there could be from that, right? That's uh, I just never thought of that. It's it's crazy to even think that they did that. <laughs> like I, <laughs> we let them hit our children's hands. Yeah. Like what the hell? Well, to, I it, to me it, it's fucked up. Like I, I I don't hit my kids. I grew up in that environment, and I just I don't. There to me, there's definitely a different difference between discipline and abuse. But there's different ways to discipline your kids other than hitting them too, right? I and yeah. I, 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 I I I recall. When I was in grade five, I was a shithead most most of my fucking younger years. And I remember getting in trouble for whatever it was, doesn't matter. And then I'm at the teacher's desk and I I, I know I'm going home to an ass kicking. Whatever it was that I just <laughs> done, I'm going home to an ass kicking. So I'm sitting there talking to my teacher and I'm fucking crying because I know I'm going home to an ass kicking. Um, and you know, so you think about that, that obviously inflicts some pretty serious fucking emotional damage. Like, I just couldn't imagine putting my, one of my kids in that kind of situation. I kind of really am, uh, stressed to my adult, my daughter in particular, that you can come to me with anything, right? We're in the middle of going through a divorce, her mother and I, so it's, so she's already in a really messed up situation at seven going on eight in March. Um, uh, and so it's just like, you know, you can come to dad. I would never like the thought of how many times I was fucking scared to go with mom and dad with stuff that to me would be like, fuck, that's it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, but it's so I just, yeah, it's. Uh, I, don't, it, I don't hit my kids. There's definitely other ways to um, uh, not punish them, but training them. Like you're rewarding them for their good behavior and you're yeah. disciplining them when they're having bad behavior. So you're like training them to be a decent human being the best that you can without giving them complete fear of getting an ass whooping. I mean, yeah, no gosh. one should be afraid of their parents. But man, my daughter is like, and she's my first teenager and she's 15. And sometimes I just get so fucking angry. I just want to, she makes me get old school. Like I want to whoop her ass. Like you don't even know me. I'm like, no girl, calm down. We're cool now. We're, chill. We're not going to do this. We're not going to let her get to us. <laughs> Girl, I have one girl and two boys, and I will tell you, the girl was the worst to deal with as a teenager compared to the boys. Like, they didn't even really seem to go through any weird phase, like maybe a little bit, but nothing really noticeable. My daughter was a complete witch for like <laughs> and that's, that's a nice way to put it <laughs> yeah I know I, I was I was being very nice there <laughs> but I know how you feel there were many times like that where I was just like I gotta walk away or I'm gonna strangle her 
Yeah. So yeah, my, yeah. my situation now is I've got a 13 year old stepdaughter that I have been her and her, her mom and I have been together since April, I, I think. So, and didn't really know her before that I'd seen her around town kind of thing. Yeah. So, and, and she's a very well-behaved kid. I'll put that out there, but they, she does have teenagerisms where the hormones go all fucking what the hell just happened. And it's, I don't even know how to approach that because I haven't been around long enough to even know how to really, it's like an eggshell walk. It, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not like it's, if, if it was one of my kids where I've been there for your whole life kind of thing, or even maybe a few years, it's like, hey, you can put that in its place. But now it's just, it, it, it's, 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 it's funny. It's weird to me. Um, but she really is a great kid. It's I, I, I enjoy living in a house where I'm the only guy, actually. It, it's because you see how they'll try and gang up on me and stuff. And like my youngest, uh, she, she really gets in on that, right? Oh, it's time to mess with dad. You know? <laughs> awesome. So it's, it's a really uh, a neat dynamic. And then there's all they, they, they like to play on that, too. Like, like you don't get to win against us. So then I'll just come and hide the bedroom and play with the plants, which I'm um, more than happy to do it at any given time right it's just yeah awesome. you know i feel like um it's quite a learning experience because like i would say being a, a female raising a female i know what it was like being her age i know what it was like going through what she was going through but a lot of times i feel like oh i've seen all that in my past now let me help you correct it that you know i know i get sassy and she gets sassy and we're both sassing back and forth it's just not the best so i have to now learn again how to approach the situation as a parent yeah like it's you... constant learning new things as she's growing i'm growing then she's growing now i'm growing and it's like man why can't uh, we when both you... be cool? <laughs> when you see your own mannerisms coming out in your children and they're not yeah. the ones that you would like to see manifesting in your child and you're like okay so like I, I'm I'm very um, defensive and combative person by nature. I don't mean to do it, but it just that that's the way I am. So when someone says something, I, and bipolar doesn't fucking help that either, right? It's like yeah. just well, if you if if you go straight to knuckles and warfare with someone who wants to go knuckles and warfare with you, that, that's a no win situation, right? So now it's kind of like you're saying you recognize what's coming because this is like a, so many ways it's just like the yeah i like the anxieties the highs and the lows it's like wow i can literally see myself in that kid i don't see the the personal uh reflection not everyone else everyone tells me i look just like my daughter but like just the matter <laughs> is it's like holy shit like yep yeah, that 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 uh -oh. yeah oh, oh boy dad's in trouble so now <laughs> oh, no. i think of when i get to, when she gets to the teenagers because this is another thing i said i had two step kids from the previous marriage and the, the son the oldest he's 13 he's going to be the easy kid he just wants to play hang out in his basement bedroom and play video games he's going to be happy the middle child just kind of wants to be out there doing fun We'll probably get into trouble because she's a follower, not a leader. So it'll be peer pressure situations that she'll get into trouble. But overall, a, a good, very good kid. Um, and then there's my daughter who just wants to have fun. <laughs> and she's already not your typical, like uh, most kids, you can punish them by taking away their tablet or whatever. Um, oh, hell yeah. there, there was a point in time when she was younger that that used to really work on her. But now she... <laughs> she couldn't care less man right? like she's got a tablet here and a tablet at her mom's and if it's my week where i don't get her for the weekend i won't see her for you know a week and a half whatever no happens. tablet for one week she's like and, and she'll she'll let that thing die and i won't even be able to talk to her and i'll be like she comes to see me again i'll be like oh why didn't you text daddy your blog she's like oh it's, it died i was playing kind of you know nonchalantly and you're just like heartbroken that you wanted to talk so to her at least awesome. once in that time <laughs> and it's but yeah no she just doesn't give a shit too much she wants to be out there having fun and like i've mentioned she likes to be a little bit of a shit disturber so when i see all this stuff adding up i'm like and when the hormones start actually kicking in in about another five years maybe less <laughs> it's like, be. but I've, I've got 
a very experienced uh, group behind me that'll be should be mostly through that by the time does he think if if Adelia is 13 um and kind of at the beginning of the real hormonal stages by the time Abigail gets into that in about five years or so she should actually be mostly through that in theory right possibly even living on her own uh, right yeah, I want to put a tiny <laughs> bullet pie back there so my daughter can go out there. I mean, she doesn't have to go now. We're not having like problems or anything like that because um, when we did, I had learned that I had to change how I react to her in a way so that we're not fighting like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know you, exactly. you can't be the parent, you can't be their friend, but it just bothers me because I was always so close to my mom. But I, I do love how close she is to her dad. Her and her dad are like best friends. And I never had that with my dad growing up. We just never really got along. And in the back of my heart, like I still kind of hold on to that today. You know, even though we do hang out and we talk and we chat and we know whatnot, you know, it still comes up. You know, in the back of my heart, like, hmm. I don't know about you, sir. <laughs> you just kind of mentioned something. Like, so, like, I've mentioned I'm a third generation forester. My dad was gone most of my childhood. Like, that's earning a living, right? That's what he did. He had to be out in the bush doing bush stuff. And so I didn't get to see him as much. I wonder if that has anything to do with why I, I go out of my way to spend time with my kids. Like I go out of town lots, work out of town lots too, but when I can, I try like, I, 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 since the breakup with the mom, when we're now we're living apart, I, I count my time with her in minutes, not hours or days or weeks. It's by the minutes. Cause it's like, and, and, cause I, I don't I want her to, I don't want her to feel that. Like I have, a very real memory of we were doing fall and burnout and grand cash and my father's truck had broken down. So I came home for two days just because I'd been out a month away from home and I had been home. And this was a shit contract where I wasn't making any money, working your fingers to the bone and not, you're barely, you're not even making minimum wage by the time you do all the math on it. This is a uh, piece yeah. work, right? And I remember when I went back to go to grand cash uh, after those two days were up, she was, I think, may not even two at the time maybe two and she's at the top of the stairs just i'm going out the door no daddy don't go uh, i was starting to cry and that was the first time where she had made any kind of gesture like no don't go to town kind of thing right and ever since then it was like oh and then i had to sit and choke on that for seven and a half hour drive to grand cash <laughs> knowing that you're fucking what what you just witnessed which is hard as a parent uh any parent is going to struggle with that and then you, you know you're sitting there in your car uh driving back to a contract where you know like you you could literally i could have literally made better money flipping burgers at a local thing in town it's just i i do <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. some contracts are like that right some kind of, sometimes you don't make money yes Okay, I got to ask you a question now that you said Grand Cash. Is that like a little mining town surrounded by mountains? Yep. Oh my God, I went there and it was fucking beautiful. I loved it. Like, it just felt like home. It was so weird. That's yeah, it, cool. it's a nice little place. So we're there in the winter and it's uh, not quite as nice because <laughs> it, it sucks too, in Alberta actually. to say it. But and there's I some beautiful sites. And the, the shitty thing is their coal mine, they shut it down while we were there working, actually. It was a, I understand it was a permanent closure. Yeah. And so you'd go into a restaurant to eat or do grocery shopping, and you go sitting there at a restaurant, and the people there, they're, like, begging you for your service uh, to come back. Please come back. Please tell your friends about us. We Because it, the mine just shut down, and that's how many jobs – and I live in a in a mill town where the same thing is happening, except for it's sawmills and yeah. OSB mills, right? And it's just, fuck, it's hard. It's hard. I think that's why, another reason why I liked the town so much is because they don't get many people because it's like out in the middle of friggin' nowhere. Like you <laughs> really are driving there to go there. Like otherwise you wouldn't really be going there. But they're so like welcoming and friendly and, you know, yep. I don't know. I just, I loved it there. It, it was, it was a nice place. I, I enjoyed it there. Like I said, the work itself was kind of brutal and not very rewarding feeling, but uh, I, I've spent a lot of years on the road working 
and you find yourself in a lot of shitholes. Uh, Bonneville, Alberta would be right at the top of that list. Whiteboard, Alberta, another one that I'll throw out there. I uh, just I equate these places with depression and just dismal. Uh, what I think of when I think of these places, maybe it's what I was going through when I was working there kind of being off on your own and lonely and stuff no i think you're right like i lived there years and years ago when it was booming and basically like when i left it was like maybe a year or two later and like a whole sites pulled out and left they were just gone like half finished houses like it was really weird yeah it's it, it's fucked up i heard i remember uh, when we were doing the fallen bird we had sites that were right outside the prison in grand cash there yeah. and so you go in you got to go in and do an orientation at the prison and they give you these uh, high vis vests you got to wear these and they're they're different slightly different colors with fucking weird shit going on with that they're, they're different than a normal high vis vest is what i'm getting at yeah so that <laughs> it's easily identifiable to the prison guards that say okay you wear these so we know what you don't run or you'll be shot. <laughs> like, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, everything went off fine. We got the trees down, cut them up, burn them, and all shit. Like, I was just kind of one of those funny things. Don't run, you will be shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just cutting trees, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, shoot. Hey, uh, thanks. Uh, DP's in the, in the house over here. Uh, good to uh, see him. I hope he's feeling better. And uh, but uh, thankfully, he reminded me in B's absence, uh, we have to ask our guest, yeah. if you were an animal, what animal would you be? Uh, I would be a lion. I don't know. That's my um, spirit animal. Very I don't know why, but... Um, like I've done DMT once and I saw a lion and I'm a Leo and um, you know, lions, uh, they like to hunt and then they like to take naps and um, I like doing a bit of both myself. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now I don't think of other animals as male or female, but when I think of a lion, I, I picture a male with the big mane and, and a female looking a lot differently and, and a lot of their mannerisms are different. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the way that they uh, treat each other too. The way that the male treats the females and the way that the females, um, I would say, react to the males. Okay. Well, I saw the video of the female <laughs> lion bite the on the male the lion's balls. And that, that deserves- I saw that the mountain, the mountain lion. Yeah, that, that just- Because the female nice, is pissed. So. She's like, <laughs> there was some mean like, I want more sex now. And he's like trying to crawl away because he can't. Yeah, he, <laughs> so it's she probably the all scoring like, stuff here. like that, dragging in the dirt. No, please don't. <laughs> it's, do you guys remember that future all my episode, Death by Snoo Snoo? Something like that. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. So I do remember that. That's so funny. <laughs> all the guys were like, sign me up. Like, <laughs> you're going to die. That's okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know why, but um, I just always kind of had a, a connection with lions, and um, not that I'm one of those weird people that has lions all over the place, but um, I do like I do like lions, and uh, a Leo um, a lot of times represents me, but not all of the time. There are some periods in my life where maybe I was like a bit more outgoing and a bit more like had to be center of attention. And then there's like a period in my time now where it's like, I'm tired of all that. So now I'm like way more chill, a lot more quiet. I've learned that a lot of times when people talk too much and they don't watch their mouth, they can get extremely offensive with the words that they say. And I know I do the same thing too. I like, I always gotta let people know, hey, sorry, I'm an asshole. I mean, I, I didn't mean to piss you off, my bad. So, uh, you know, oh, I did. And I'm like sorry. the one time I did DMT and I saw a lot of weird shit, but I wanted to go to outer space. So I start flying up towards the clouds and I'm staring at these clouds and a lion forms, the one with the mane. And he's looking at me like I knew he was stopping me. Like I was flying and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Like he's like the gatekeeper or something. And he's like, nope, you can't go past here. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I went back down. <laughs> and is your astrological sign actually a, a Leo as well? Leo. 
Yeah, cool. Cool. <laughs> I want to know, Uncle Rick, do you got any kids? Do you got any horror stories you want to share? <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let me about well, it. I, I've shared this one before. So oh, it's public, it's public knowledge now. Uh, Are you gonna show us a picture? Yes. <laughs> oh, I can feel, I can feel the nervousness. Uh, you've seen it before, have you? <laughs> yeah. Of my boy. Okay. Do you have uh, him on a show with you for Christmas? He made it. He made it uh, up for Christmas. I'm about normally. I'm about five or six hours from Vancouver where I live. Uh, but oh, we've had, yeah, we had the floods and the slides and it, the damage was uh, incredible. It's still going, I mean, the re oh. reconstruction is, uh, uh. anyway, um, yeah. So he did come up and uh, it was like a nine hour treacherous drive. And I, you know, I told him don't, but, but he did anyway. And so it was great to see him. And, uh, and then when he went back, it was, he went a different route, uh, safer and uh, took about seven hours. So, yeah. so safer anyway. is always the longer one, right? Yeah. You, you don't know. You just don't know, but, uh, better safe than sorry. I've been in like way too many car accidents and that's here in like Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> I do not like driving in the snow. I'll avoid it if I, if I possibly can. Oh, is that, so, that, that Duffy Road that out. Rick's kid would have took to get up here on the way up? That can be a bad road at the best of times. Let alone right. you at this time of year with fresh snowfall on. And then when that's one of the only routes to get through because of road closures and stuff now. So you got like uh, rig traffic and stuff like that where they're, they can only go so fast up and down these hills, right? So you're just... Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a treacherous stretch of highway. I've done it. I'm so anyway. scary. I'm really scared about driving in the snow. I think I have nightmares about it all the time. Yeah, I don't like driving in the snow either. I used to get really worked up about it, but as I said, traveling for work a lot, you kind of get used to it. And just, I remember coming home from Bonneville, Alberta, and with the roads, when the roads are perfect, it's about, you can do it in, I think, 10 and a half hours. So, uh, you know doing about 10 over the speed limit i've never been much of a speeder um and so um it, but then i remember coming home from uh from bonneville there and it was right around hinton or and it started snowing and then by the time you hit jasper park like it's coming down you're holy shit yeah it's gonna be this is gonna get uh kind of crazy and then by the time I get to uh, just before Belmont, it's like everything's in a vortex. You're getting dizzy just trying to creep yes. along. Yes, it's like it feels like Star Trek or something. Where those yeah, stars and then I yeah. then all of a sudden everything stopped right in the middle of the fucking you're highway. And I, not even high. Like you're like, yeah, I, yeah, that's so I'm true. Driving, like, you're driving at night with the headlights on. Yeah. You like rub it your eyes as if that's gonna make yeah. things better. <laughs> Or you like raise your eyebrows like no this didn't <laughs> yeah. work this time <laughs> yeah and, and i i think about like back in the um back in when we were teenagers we used to eat mushrooms and go driving around and that shit all the time on purpose it just no hell yeah they just, like, it's like you get, the, probably you not get, through all the stretcher stuff right though well, you, you start driving when you got a blizzard uh, going on and you're on mushrooms. It's like you're in Star Trek. Like, you know, <laughs> like, cause I, I don't like where I've always lived in like kind of back communities where not a lot of people, even in Prince George, which is a fair size city. I lived up on the Hart highway out in the middle of nowhere. So there's a lot of back roads where there's fucking big snow banks and not a lot of people around. So okay. if you put a car in a ditch frequently, which we frequently did, you can either just push it out or there's someone down the road. They'll come give you a tug kind of thing. Right. It's oh. not like, I remember, like, I learned to drive in this kind of conditions where the city I live in now, three streets, st three street lights. That's all we have. 2,000 people population. And then I went to work in Bonneville that I was just mentioning. You got to bypass Edmonton on the Anthony Hende Road to get there. I drove by at, like, 11 o'clock at night on my way to Bonneville where it's kind of dead. There's not much going on. When I come back driving through there there's uh it's fucking like two in the afternoon fucking millions of fucking cars everywhere i've never driven in anything like this i was like just like 
instantly just, <gasps> what, the fuck, what the fuck going on here, here right? So I, if we're not doing it in that kind of situations, I'm not saying it's necessarily even a good thing to be doing. I'm just saying that. that <laughs> Don't but try fuck, that was it ever a lot it. of fun, though? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, uh, Green Goddess, I was just curious. You you have some testing equipment? No, You're, I don't have testing equipment. I go no, get no, my. No. I'm, I'm sorry, Green Goddess. Yeah, I was. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're so close together. We've done so I well. Said that today. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, like my work testing equipment is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and what what are you what are you testing for? Um, we can do everything. We can do um, a full uh, cannabinoid test. We can do THC level, CBG, CBN, CBD, whatever you want. Mold. Ter terpenes, of course. <laughs> uh, pinpoint the exact kind of mold. Like, yeah, we have really, really good equipment. And the terpenes as yep, well. Terpene yeah. profile. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yep. And, and you take, uh, well, obviously, well, do you just take whatever they give you or are you, so, you sample? Yeah. Unfortunately, when it's a customer, I mean, we do explain yeah. a better way to test, but we have to test whatever it is they give us, which is why we have um, a waiver on the back, uh, basically stating that it may not be completely accurate because we're going off the sample they gave us, not the whole uh, plant. So, but, but, but you're doing your best uh, oh, to provide the information to people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And what we'll do too, is if we can't get uh, a proper test, like sometimes like uh, things that are made with like the coconut oil or the MCT oil or whatever, they are harder to break down to get the results. Um, so if we can't get the results, you get your money back. We're not going to keep your money or anything like that. You get your money back. Um, and we tell you ahead of time, you know, about those particular ones too. Like we have forms and things that explain everything. What would you have, <clears throat> excuse me, would you have much experience in, uh, like, uh, smelling terpenes and c comparing them to what there's. Where was I going with this question? Like uh, if terpenes actually do what they're supposed to do? They're, yeah, if they exist, uh, uh, yeah. Um, so we are collecting data on all of that from like our, our clients, um, but we don't have anything put together yet because mm. we've only, it's going to take a long time to be able to put those puzzles together. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, but we are we are documenting everything. We've documented cool. all of our cancer patients, um, and we get as much information as we can. So, like, if they're willing to give us, um, you know, their doctors, uh, like their test results and everything like that, awesome. We can even like black out their name or whatever if they don't want to be known. But yeah, we try to get as much information as we can. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, if you're if you're not aware, uh, uh, Green's Goddess uh, uh, in, in, in Canada. I'm gonna get it right before the night is over. Uh, in, in Canada, uh, Green Goddess uh, like is stepping outside the law, uh, doing what she's doing uh, in the Ooh. indigenous world, and and uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's a it's a I little know. weird. It's like we're black market, but we're not because we're right there. They know we're doing it and they're not stopping us. Um, yeah. We're using our native rights to do it, um, but we are not the government. So we don't have to go by the same uh, laws that they go by, which is awesome. Interesting. Yeah. It's but that's off. why we have our own lab because we still want everything to be safe and we want everybody to be getting, you know, exactly what they want. Yeah. So we uh, slowly over the last four years have built up our lab. Uh, we ha now have a grow facility. It's, it's pretty awesome. awesome. 
Yeah, yeah that's cool. I, I, yeah. I absolutely love the fact that you guys have testing facilities available to you. Because one thing I've often wondered is because now, like, I, I've, I, I love the native dispensary market. I am fucking huge. You guys have heard me say it and scream it as loud as I can a million times. Yeah. But I've wondered, yeah. because there is less regulation, can, are these some of these dispensaries giving you shit product because they don't yeah. actually know what they're giving you? Right. Totally. That is a very real possibility. Totally. So, but you as a customer need to go into multiple stores and, yeah. and do the research yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and two, like, not to badmouth anybody, but just walking into a store, you can kind of get a feel of, of what, you know, what the quality will be like. Yeah, good point. There's a couple on our reserve that, like, you wouldn't, none of us would even walk into, you know what I mean? Just looking yeah. at the outside, you'd be like, yeah, that's not, that's not one I'm going to. I would. I'm worried uh, that you're going to get rid of <laughs> your money as soon as you walk in the door type shit. Eh? I like checking out reviews. Like if a place has really great reviews, if I was like new to town and I didn't have anything on me and I needed to go find, well, what is this town? What's their best dispensary that they have to offer like i'm gonna go check out the reviews and see what the reviewers say so that I, way you, know, you go into one of the best and they sell good buds you know i mean if, if a dispensary is selling a great product and they're backing it up with testing and saying this is what's in this product and you take it home and you enjoy it you like it you're gonna probably go online well one out of a thousand it's gonna go online and say hey this is pretty fucking awesome just check it out yeah. you thumbs up this video Colorado was uh, one of the first states to uh, to legalize recreational and, and medical. When, uh, one of the first, or like, I think we were, and then like California and, and uh, Oregon, not too far behind us, right? In Washington, I meant. Um, we are, uh, we are um, not quite legalizing, but shoot i forgot the name where it's basically not illegal anymore um with psilocybin De decriminalizing criminalize right, <laughs> right. A, see what happens when you smoke you forget that's a big oh, word um, for <laughs> me and uncle rick criminalizing psilocybin conversation so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> sentence i should say <laughs> <laughs> yeah shoot uh now we got nothing to say. <laughs> so, do you have any kind of um, like dream projects that you would like to work on, maybe for this new year, or just something that you would like to get to at uh, just at some point in time in the future when working with cannabis? What you're doing with? Um, I want the greenhouse. I really want to just um, grow outdoors naturally in a greenhouse, and I want to get into like regenerative farming. I like organic farming, um, but if I ever got to have my own property, you know, like picture perfect property the way I always wanted it, I would like to be able to grow my own food organically and, and have like my own kind of regenerative farm. My, it's funny, I was talking to my sister-in-law the other day because I'm going to get her chickens, but um, she's like, what is regenerative? And I'm like, regenerative is basically what you're doing where you're putting your, your chicken poop, you're tilling it into the soil, you're growing a vegetable garden out of that and then you're taking off pieces of your vegetables and you're feeding them back to your chickens and then you're collecting your chicken poop and then you're putting it back into your vegetable garden and you're growing vegetables and you're taking pieces off your vegetables feeding it back to your chickens like the endless cycle yeah. the so circle. that's yep. what i'd really like to get into because who knows what's going to happen to this world i mean if it's pretty bad right now and we don't know where the future is going so bad things will happen good things can be a result of that like because we'll be COVID, fine. We'll now be we got fine. time to come in and see each other like in meetings like this. Like you guys are all the way up in Canada and, you know, we wouldn't be able That's to come cool. together in a room, but we could come together in a room here. Yeah, so, for sure. For sure. That, that I think is really awesome. But yeah, I just, yeah, anyways, I think yeah. about regenerative farming and shit like that. So right now I would like to get a greenhouse. That's my next project is to try to make a, a you know, easy one. 
something that can handle our weather out here, you know? What, uh, what you know, the technical questions come out. Uh, I'm not going to ask what latitude you are, but do you know what altitude you are? Alta, um, if you I'll, ask, ask Siri and she'll tell you. Okay. Um, well, I'm right next to Denver. That's the Mile High City. I think that, okay, well, that's 7,200 feet. Yeah, that's, uh, that's up there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Mile so we high. Get, we're getting some snow. Um, we don't get too much because I, where I'm at right now, I am in, in the Denver metro area and it stays kind of warmer here with all the city and all the cement and concrete than it does in the more rural areas, especially in the mountains. Mountains yeah. are always getting a lot of snow. And usually by the time it gets to our area, it kind of kind of turns into rain sort of, but some snow, so, crazy winds. So, so tell us uh, a, a bit about the uh, artwork that went into uh, Luna Gardens. <laughs> I'm wondering if um, 710DP, I don't know what you guys call him, is on here still. I know he was on here earlier. He um, was, my yeah. old one hey, was, was like what you saw on the website, which was like the moon. I really liked that. But this one is more of like um, something to put on my products to show that there's cannabis in it. Um, that's all I got. And I, I love that. Um, I love that image. But uh, I don't know. I'm a bit picky. I wanted it to be a lot cooler. And the lady that I was working with didn't seem to want to have it. No, <laughs> she tried, she I, I get, more. <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. And I, I like the way that you can imagine the how to, to close the whole the, the whole moon, uh, you know, just to finish off in your imagination how, what it would look like to be a full moon. Anyway, I guess I'm a little too high to uh, <laughs> discuss these uh, high level things. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I was wondering how high I was, confused by what you were saying. <laughs> you designing your logo right on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with I was like doing there. shit on the full moon, like making oils on the full moon or popping seeds on the full moon. You know, harvesting under a full moon is so beautiful. Luna, because that's my last name. <laughs> so I figured I'd make it all match. <laughs> I love that name. I used to watch a cartoon when I was little, and there was a character named Luna, and I always loved it. <laughs> yeah, I, I always think of uh, that old wrestling chick, Luna Vachon. Um, <laughs> you're much better <laughs> than she was. She was quite the fucking haggard looking thing. <laughs> I like. Do you, do you, I just you watched some weird basting on Netflix. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> I just watched a space show on Netflix. Shoot, I forgot what it was called. Well, it's not a show, it's a movie. Lost in Space? I don't know. I saw it on Netflix and um, this one girl, well, I don't want to give out all the details. You guys have to watch the movie. But the girl's name was Luna and I thought that, that was pretty cool. Cool. Um, she's a really special person. <laughs> and her name was also Luna, which means good things. Actually, it means the moon, but good things are coming. <laughs> no, there's, there, there's also, uh, Rick, did you ever drink that Baja Rosa? I know you guys might have that down in the States and stuff. It was like a kind of, I think, strawberry tequila kind of freaking, like a liqueur kind of drink. There's a Baja Luna, now that I think about it. That used to be like my uncle's favorite drink back in the day. He's like one of the great potheads of the past that... I really wish he could have been around to see legalization because just the, like, I think he's one of those, he's, he'd be about Rick's age right now and just kind of, wow, this is very cool. Right. But, um, fortunately we all don't all make it that long. So. My grandpa had ran, um, a pharmacy and, um, when we were sitting at the table, and this is when I was young, probably even before I was doing cannabis, but like my older brother was or something, uh, we were talking about it, uh, uh, the whole family, we were sitting down at their table talking about it. My grandpa had mentioned 
how healthy people were like when hemp was around. He was like, hemp was legal and everybody was using it and it was no big deal. And then everyone wanted to make hemp look like it was this terrible thing. And then now we all had to get rid of hemp. And then now like he used to describe what the hemp was good for and what it was used for and why it didn't make any sense to get rid of it. But he didn't know too much about the cannabis or the THC or marijuana part of it, but he did know that there was no reason to have gotten rid of hemp in the first place. So um, uh, it makes me feel, and he was like a gardener. I wish I paid more attention to his gardening, you know, when I was hanging out with him, because obviously he's gone now, but um, you know, he really, uh, he was a good guy. So. Do you ever wonder what the world would be like right now if cannabis had never been fucking witch hunted and, um, just fucking strung out the way it has been and if it was just allowed to carry on as it always should have been um like uh, how how common it, it, it might be uh, in this day and age you think of uh, like and how, how much farther would medical research how much more advanced would that be at this point in time um like and all we talk about how we've and you know, like we, if we adopted other prime medicine yeah and we've well, we'll talk about we all everybody seems to believe that we've lost a lot of this or that along the ways with selective breeding to kind of to gain something you're going to give up something else and you just think of like is there has there been other cannabinoids that we don't know about maybe you're not even around anymore uh you, yeah you oh i totally yeah. 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 I, I, but the, the one that gets me is when you think about land race strains and all the wild cannabis that would have just been wiped out just for being cannabis yeah, and that's stuff that probably I don't I don't know maybe some of it was kept away uh, for like seed banks for fucking you, you know by people that actually know and I I you know I think you see where I'm going with this and share right but like uh, <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah what about that guy that they just found like all this guys who had a bag of hemp seeds yep yeah, I've maybe the hemp might have been gone by then but still had was a bag of hemp seeds. Yeah. Talk about seed drink. <laughs> what I would like to see is if uh, they could get something like that to come back. Um, like there's got to be some way that you could probably re-germinate those or somehow, right? Um, through modern science techniques. Or it, it might be a trial and error process where, say, you managed to find a magical cache of a thousand hemp seeds from 10,000 years ago or whatever. Uh, maybe you can only get one or two of those to sprout and do their thing because that's just the way it is. But wouldn't that be cool? And there's just something in there that we've never seen before. This is getting awfully fucking spacey and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, no, I wasn't. One thing to talk about is one thing that, I mean, who knows if this is real. One thing that I've heard is that they'll say, when we came here to this earth, we were given plants to use as medicine, as we have adapted, our medicine has adapted, and we've adapted in our medicine, then we, then our medicine. So what it may have been like a, a long time ago is completely different than what we're doing today, because back then it was meant for that time. So who knows? I mean, it sure as hell would be fucking awesome to find out. No, but, that's a great way of thinking about it. Right. And we're like, yeah, yeah probably won't happen. Nah. I got excited only to let myself know. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Great, right? With that, I think it's about time we start <laughs> thinking about wrapping up the show. Do you have anything else you want to say before we get going? I just want to say cheers to all my soil nerds in chat. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. And thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been a Wonderful pleasure. Finally, me and Green Goddess get together. <laughs> well, hey, this is so now great. everyone knows we're two different people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was in a chat one night and somebody's like, is that the same green? Is that green? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was super uh, cool to have you on. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. 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 true pleasure to meet you. Back. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, you guys. It's been awesome to finally meet all of you and chat all night. I've had a wonderful time. So thank you very Thanks much. You. No, yeah. you've been super cool. This was this really been, cool. Been, <laughs> one thing it's actually kind of, I think this is the first time in a long time where we've had so many people from the panel, no show. And yeah. you know, what? it's kind of nice because like, it, don't get me wrong. Those are fucking awesome. I love everybody there. 
but it's you you get to talk a little bit more when there's fewer uh people up here right you get a little bit more involved and get to know and get to listen a little bit less insanity i guess so uh, this is this has been cool night to get to know you all uh, like i said i'm really glad you were, you showed up and offered us yeah. Um, I, did we tried getting you on <laughs> a, quite a while back. I, I we were talking about to you trying to get you on. It's, um, and well, shit just oh, well, I'm so out. glad I was here. For I was it. working at the time, but I'm not working right now. Well, I'm not working for a, a paycheck. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. working. <laughs> but okay, you, bye, you guys. I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna go to bed. Awesome. Uh, we'd love <laughs> love to have you back. Absolutely. Oh yeah, let's do it. Let me know yeah. when. We didn't talk uh, about your caregiver program and all that. We got lots oh, to talk yeah. about. So uh, love to see you again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Awesome. We should get together sometime in the future and like catch up. See where we've all each been at since then. Yeah, totally. That would take be care awesome. because, you know, to this month has been a really, a really tricky month and a lot of people are getting sick. So just stay healthy and stay alive. Yes, you too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Be safe, everybody. Thanks again. Everybody in chat, we love you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, I'm not even ashamed to say I've kind of ignored you guys most uh, night, but I've actually been (laughs) caught up in this conversation. It's actually it's it's been great. Uh, Yeah. I I, I, and if bees you ha- i don't know if bees is watching or maybe he'll watch this later but uh bees let's get her back sooner than later please um yeah yeah i, I think yeah. we can get a lot more in depth with her uh it's a lot of fun yeah. um, absolutely either of you guys got anything you want to add before we split i i wouldn't mind oh i froze Nine o'clock Eastern, let's be buds. <laughs> I totally froze your whole speech there. Shit. <laughs> I didn't catch that either. Hey, Rick, can you can you uh, do that one more time? I, just, I didn't catch it. I don't think Green God has caught it either. So I just want to make sure it got caught on the recording. Okay. It's uh, let's be buds tomorrow night. Bingus uh, is uh, our guest for the evening and um, looking forward to a lot of fun with him. Totally. All right. Uh, be Nine o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. You heard it. Don't miss it. Let's be buds. Be there tomorrow night. <laughs> hanging out with Bingus. Um, you guys, great show. I love hanging out with y'all. We'll see yeah, you. Yeah, me too. I'll, I'll try and make it for the show, Rick. If, uh, I, I, I've get in there a couple times lately. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little bit better at that. But um, And if not, I'll see you all Friday. Yeah. Well, have a great show Friday. And then until then, everybody have a great week. It's, awesome. Uh, happy New Year and all that stuff. DP, we're thinking about you, brother. Uh, get well soon. And you know what? Just on the way out, we'll even throw a dab frog up for you, brother. I hope you're watching. Hope you get better. Have a good night, guys. Oh, and then I stopped the fucking share right away. I'm <laughs> supposed to hit the play button on that. All right, DP, this one's for you, brother, and then we'll split. You think DP can do dabs right now with COVID? Oh, I don't know. Depends how his chest is feeling. Yeah, are we being insensitive to him right now by being like, ah, uh-huh. <laughs> right? Dab for the awesome dab toward him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're just assholes to him. <laughs> DP, we love you. Everyone in chat, we love you. We'll see you Friday night, tomorrow night. Let's be buds, 6 p.m. Pacific with Vegas. Don't, don't miss it. <laughs>